Today, we are absolutely thrilled to have Orlando M. Pilchard, who uh, better is known as, well, I guess he's better known as Orlando actually to us, but uh, Nick Pelling is here to talk with us about uh, the 8 bits world that uh, we know him so well from, the Archimedes, and some things about himself and the Vark software. So, Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. It really it's uh, it's it's so cool that we've been able to get you uh, to to talk about some of this stuff. You know, this is the the games that you've written are, hold such a special place in our heart, and uh, I know that uh, for a while, you know, the retro scene has not been your like. It's something you moved on from, and then only recently have we been able to gently coax you back to sort of talk about it. And we're we're just thrilled that you're you're taking the time to to speak with us about this and. There's kind of a link as well, I believe, because you know you, you yourself have, have resurrected a game of your own that uh, that we can will be talking about later on, um, and folks can can play on modern soft, soft systems without having to use an emulator, right? So, so uh, I guess that's another reason why you know this is reawakened in your mind. Yeah. But actually, um, just being asked to talk about this is always a pleasure. Yeah, so let's go. Let's just go for it. Don't worry. Okay. Then um, I'm going to start sharing, and we're going to start the conversation. If I just make sure I get the right one, and there we go. So this is broadly the uh, the kind of stuff we're going to cover, which is going to take us a good couple of hours uh, or thereabouts. So there's an awful lot of stuff. games and stuff to talk about, and so I'm not going to read out this, and not we're not going to look over these type of things. But I mean, it just gives you an idea about how much of an impact Nick's work has had in our, our, our world. But first, Nick. That's me. That is you. Tell us about yourself. I was born, wrote some games, and here I am. <laughs> That's a super abridged version, right? <laughs> but at least we could already start with, um, you know, what got you into computing in the first place? It's just, I was just a mathsy kid, um, mm -hmm. liked all that stuff. And then the, kind of the, that was the era when the very, very first home micros came out, Acorn Atom, ZX80. And that was, I was just there at the right time. And I kind of, I remember when I was um, playing with the Acorn Atom, one day I realized that the, the memory map screen was just memory. I didn't have to write like draw, draw commands. I could just stick numbers in. And this was like a revelation. And I went, okay, here we go. And the rest is just, you know, it was, it was 20 years of that. But before that, I had a Sinclair Cambridge programmable calculator. I'd like that kind of thing, with a nice little kind of a sort of um, texture pouch. Quite nice. And I did and a bit of it plays a lunar landing thing. game, it says down there. Um, did you write games for, for your programmable calculator? I didn't. It had 256 bytes, or 256 instructions. And that was it. And I think the Lunar Landing game was a little bit, um, I can't put it, rudimentary. Let's say. I think it was just numbers, not animation. Got it. But this was uh, kind of like the, your entry level. But then, you know, then the 8 bit computers you alluded to um, sort of came into your life. And you, your first computer was, was an Atom, right? Or... That's right, yeah. And, um, uh, and okay. like, everyone, like everyone else, I kind of bought it with like 2K of RAM and then expanded it with extra. RAM chips every time I could afford a bit more pocket money. But, and your pocket money was sort of supplanted because, you know, you, you had a company, right? You were selling games really early on. I, I was selling them. This was the, the Plantique, as it is now, uh, was actually um, my father's and grandfather's uh, chemist shop back then. And uh, we got orders into there because it was business premises and we'd, we'd sell them out, send them out. It was great. I think I recorded all the original tapes myself. Oh my gosh. I think I did. But it was a big deal. <laughs> it's a bit lost in the mysteries of time. But so there are two addresses associated with right. uh, Aardvark. This is one of them. And then the other one is uh, still a pharmacy here. So maybe That's tell right. us about this it, one. It was around that time that my dad um, got tired of that pharmacy because it was quite small and didn't have much um, storage space. 
Whereas that pharmacy has kind of um, kind of like, like a big garage area out to the back. And also that was also three doors down from the doctors. So people could roll out of the doctors into the pharmacy without having to Got cross it. the road, which if you little old lady is a big deal. Yes. <laughs> so but it's kind of interesting. It's yeah. still a pharmacy after all these yeah, years. Yeah. And I lived upstairs and um, ran the, the um, hard lot software from upstairs. So that through those windows there, that's where I was. And so how old were you when you were, were doing this? Um, I started selling um, the Atom games when I was about 15 or 16. I can't remember the exact date. Gosh, and so was that the family home there? Were you like duplicating No, no, stuff no, no. Stacking we, we, up? We lived down the road. There was, this was, this was um, basically a kind of a flat that was bought with the pharmacy. And I said, oh, I have that. So I did. Gosh, business premises back there. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're looking so, at Ardwark HQ. Ardwark HQ, yes. And this is like, yeah, 1983, as the, 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 the title says. Yeah. And you were 15, 16, but then obviously um, you got to the end of schooling and you ended up going to university. That's right, yes. Went to Manchester and um, some very dodgy accommodation there. Uh, Cornbrook House has now been demolished, which is good. I think the, <laughs> the, the, um, the university is net better for its destruction. <laughs> is that due to anything you did it did there or, or, or no just... <laughs> it was just a kind of a concrete monstrosity that um no one would love i think i think even the architect hated it <laughs> and they love anything um but was this the end of argonaut or was argonaut uh, argonaut oh. sorry listen to me i've got argonaut, right <gasps> is this the end of Argo- <laughs> aardvark or was aardvark on uh hiatus at this point how how did that i was work doing out? both I, I was kind of doing both badly I, I, should so you, have done, I should have basically not gone to university or not done hard work. I should have, should have chosen, but I tried to do both. And were you commuting backwards and forwards between Manchester and, basically, and Essex? Yes. Or, gosh. Yeah, and it um, wasn't great. Like I say, I should have either moved hard work up to Manchester or given up on one. So, and, yeah, I don't know. Was, 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 was there any... Oh, when you, I was like kind of 18 years old and um, just very optimistic and very busy, busy headed. I was trying to do everything. I, I thought I could do everything. And of I course. Thought, why not? Why not try? So, you know. I, and did I, you have I, any I, help I, at all? Or is it like a one man show? No, no, I, I had um, people helping me and, and people I employed in, back in Essex. Um, but yeah, that, that was at one point my sister was there. So that was good. Um, so she, keeping she in Jaffa, the family she somewhat. Jaffa, she liked Jaffa cakes, so that was that was easy. <laughs> oh, it's so not very high played employees then. This is uh, Jaffa, Jaffa, Jaffa cakes, cakes as well. Uh, Jaffa cakes oh, as well. Yeah. In addition, <laughs> so what what made you come up with the name Aardvark? It's it smells like it was put to put at the beginning of like the Yellow Pages, but I can't imagine that was the reason. It, it really wasn't. It was just a very silly name, and I was just a very silly. I, I love words, and. Um, I just love stupid words, and Ardwark was one of the stupidest words. <laughs> closely followed by Ard Wolf, which I... yeah, <laughs> that's they're very closely. Yeah, we could be chasing each other. <laughs> and then this is the the logo that I think many of us will recognise yeah. from from the beautiful packaging. And mm. who who came up with this logo? Is this your drawing or no, no, no? Um, about this time, when I went from Zaliga, I had uh, the idea of um, basically kind of professionalising stuff, and. The I found a, a PR guy called Gareth Williams, and he, he was really really good. And he said, um, "You know, you need to basically make your packaging look a bit classier." I mean, the, the Zalaga box was, you know, okay, but um, he said, "No, you need to cut up your game." And he commissioned. I, I paid him. To, he commissioned the um, the basic the, the paintbrush one, and um, then uh, when we did. Um, Electron Zaliga, the um, Zaliga with the, the, the shotgun, kind of came in as well. Got but it, so, got that, it. so basically, it was just oh, oh, I liked the kind of the, the gold gold packaging, and I liked the kind of the clean lines of it, and it was a bit special. And yeah, it was great. Got it. So, as we said earlier, your first computer was was the Atom, mm. and I, I don't think we really need to introduce it to most of the folks that are on this chat here. But for posterity, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what the Atom? was um and how you got into it how, how where did you get your first computer it's it's basically um 
like a BBC, just not as good. <laughs> and um, it's the, the same sort of things that you recognise from the from, from BBC, um, all just kind of architecturally, the ROMs a bit quite similar. The basic was kind of similar, but just not as good. Um, the character set was similar, but not quite as good. Um, the, the CPU was very similar, but not quite as good. The ULA was similar, but not quite as good. You get the picture. I see. I see where you're going with this, right? I, so you know, when, when, they went, when, they went, when they went to the BBC, they basically upped their game all 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 through it. They took all the things they were doing with the Atom, <coughs> excuse me, and just got them right. And right. so that's it was a real learning experience for. So this, they, they they learned a lot from what they did here. Um, there wasn't enough RAM. The screen modes weren't enough. Um, the BBC, you know, the basic needs improving. Um, lots of things needed fixing, and to their credit, they really did fix pretty much all the things that weren't quite good enough with the Atom. And the BBC was like kind of a, you know, apple in the basket. It was great. Right, right, right. I, I find it interesting myself. Like, well, first of all, one hundred and twenty pounds back then was a considerable investment. Yeah. Um, but so just seeing that, but also just the things they picked out as being like the stuff that you would put in a magazine to, to advertise, like communication loop. What the heck is a communication? No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> oh, well. But obviously, you know, being uh, the smart person that you are, you, you, you used your atom not just to, to do your homework or whatever, you, you sold it to your parents or whoever bought it for you on, but... Um, no one did that. <laughs> Come on. No, one did that. no, no, of course. But we, we, we were hoping to get for this presentation uh, a, a screenshot of your first game, which... Yes which um, was Hedgehog. So tell us about Hedgehog. It's basically like Frogger, but I, I, I hadn't seen Frogger at that point. Um, I just came up with the idea basically independently. Um, and um, yeah, it was, but it was like it was like Frogger, but just not quite as good visually. Like it, was, it was basically it was, um, an X was a frog, which you can see in the frog, actually, to be fair. It is a bit, a bit, a bit like an X. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I know you say about it, but yours yours was a hedgehog, though. Mine was is, literally, course, yes, mine was literally an X. Much more famed for being rather unfortunately um, squished by traffic. So is that what made you call it hedgehog? Or? Exactly, exactly. Oh, dear. Poor hedgehogs. Poor hedgehogs. But you were the but, hero so, hedgehog. I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have the C90 somewhere, and so we're I doing have. our best to recover it. Yes, and... I have um, grabbed the audio off it, and I'm struggling with... Um, CSW and, and make UA, UAFAM and all the rest of it, like everyone else who's ever had to do this kind of thing. But sometimes it works really well, and often it just doesn't work, and you don't know why. So yeah, <laughs> got it, got it. But, yeah, but you CSW, moved on from CSW. Oh. As a side thing, CSW has so many options for filtering stuff that <laughs> it kind of does it does your head in trying to get it work to work to do what, what you want to do. Anyway, well, anyway. I'm certain that, that uh, if you haven't already been offered all the help in the world in doing that, that there are many people here who will... who will. Oh, it's really, really great, I know. But I want to do it myself. Yeah, of course, of course. Like <laughs> but if you get stuck, okay. we, we know the people who can help. Right now, I'm still making progress, so... Got it. Okay. Got it. And, and here, here, obviously, we have a game which we presumably you did see uh, in the arcade. Or I somewhere. did, yes, I did. And I liked it, but again, it was my own version of it. So there we are. It's, um, and I did that, actually, a little story. I did that for my um, com uh, computing A-level. That was my project. And they gave me zero points for it. They disallowed it. No! Oh. Yes. What was the reasoning? Was, did it not meet the brief? What, what? It was a game. You're not allowed oh. to do a game. They said after the event. Not having said, you can't put a game in before. They, well, they decided, no, you can't do a game. Oh, dear. So I retook it the next year and got an A. But there, that's kind of, um, I did Guru shading for my, 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 my retake. Oh, very interesting. Not bit, on the Atom, presumably. That was on the BBC, actually. So, Right. <laughs> just not cool. very fast. And so obviously very slow were... Guru shading, I should say. Very, very slow Guru shading. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Atom Invaders, you released, obviously, as <laughs> under Aardvark Software. That's right. Uh, and um, how... Is this your? Was this the? Oh no! He, did you actually release Hedgehog, or was that just a game you'd written for yourself? I think I released Hedgehog later. I wrote, I wrote it first, released it later, but um, I don't think I sold very many. So I'm, I'm still trying to find it. 
And so was it a case of, you know, uh, duplicating the tapes yourself and then running downstairs and putting them in your, your dad's chemist? Is that like um, how it started? With, our, with that, Invaders, yes. With the next one, um, Galaxians, I did actually get them duplicated in a place in Romford. Got it. And we can actually see we've got uh, the Invaders inlay here, which has got some amazing uh, copy. Is this your copy that you wrote here? or I believe so. The Vanguard, bombing Vanguard of your bases. There's some great, great words yeah, there, that, which again is under your <laughs> your words wordplay. <laughs> um, so this was probably like uh, the tape that we can see here is probably actually recorded by you or a family member or one of your employees. I think it was me. <laughs> I think it was me. <laughs> Fantastic. That was a bit of fun. Fantastic. But as you said, you 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 uh, you moved on from Invaders and and moved on to. Galaxians. Yes, I played this about a year ago and on an emulator and I could not believe how um, amazingly hard it was. <laughs> what was I thinking of? And it took me like um, 20 minutes just to kind of get past the first level. And then I went, oh, okay, I remember this now. <laughs> oh, okay, I remember, I remember all those tricks from <laughs> years ago. But, you know, games were, games were just harder back then. They were then, hard. Right? They nowadays, were dead, yeah. nowadays, you know, Kids these days, eh? eh? Let's not Kids. let's not go down that route. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so Galaxians obviously um, is multiple colours going on here. So was there some change in the way you were writing the code? Just no, it's or... just there was just one mode that the BBC had, which was like mode five, basically. I see on the atom. So so to you were able that. to get a few colours into it. Yeah, it looked all right, I think. And something that piqued my interest, which is more because I'm I never really uh, um, used an atom. I never even I don't think I've ever seen an atom actually. But this whole external sound thing was that a common thing to have in atom? No, games, no, this was this, that... this was a new thing. I, I, I figured out that um, the same the, the same way that they they used um, the internal sound, I could use for external sound by twiddling between both bits at the same time. I see. And so, oh, okay, let's do that. So this the, so, would but, normally be used for like the squealing noise that was being recorded to the tape. You could put the same information on the... Exactly. And then you'd get an amplifier for, for, for free, free inverted commas. Yeah, exactly. So you could put it into stereo and play it. Enormous sound. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a bit of fun. And then, of course, at this point, you still were Nick crediting as, as... You were still Nick... Well, you are still Nick Pelling. Still, still Nick <laughs> Pelling, right? But... Unless you, I mean, unless unbeknownst to me, you've changed your name recently. But so obviously, we know you better uh, under a, a pseudonym, but we'll talk yes, about I, that. I'm, I'm worse known as Nick Pelling. You're worse known <laughs> as Nick Pelling. So by this point, um, you'd got a BBC Micro, or well, let's talk about that because well, I didn't. How actually. do you get hold of a BBC Micro? Okay, one day it was a Friday, and I had this weird feeling that someone was talking about me. I didn't know what was going on. And I asked everyone, what's going on? What's happening today? And everyone said, it looked to me like I was a bit mad. But then uh, well, I came home and I was still a bit mad. And then on Saturday morning, I got a letter and it was Acornsoft. They said, we've been trying to get hold of you um, all yesterday. And so it said this letter. Those are the days when you know, letters did arrive next day. Um, Can you come to Cambridge? So I went up to Cambridge that day and came home with a BBC micro under my arm. Holy moly. Which was like kind of a bit, ooh, amazing. Um, what wasn't so amazing was that it, it was a, it was an early BBC micro that they'd forgotten to put the serial ULA in. So I couldn't ah. actually save anything out. So it was a bit annoying. But um, yeah, there you are. So I came back, from, went to Cambridge, had a little meeting, came back with the BBC under my arm. And presumably that meeting was about this game. That's the one. Because they'd seen my Galaxian game and said, this is good. This is very good. It's better than anything we're doing. And um, said, oh, I wonder if you can do it for the BBC. And I could. And I did. As you can see. So given that you had no serial ULA, how on earth did this happen? <laughs> I so, can't imagine. So I wrote a load of code. And um, every time I tried to write out Stuff to the cassette didn't work. So I left the machine on for like several weeks. <laughs> and in the end, I printed the whole thing out and um, 
turns off, came, went, took it back to Cambridge, said, ah, oh, you haven't got cereal really today. That will explain it. Came back and then typed it all in again. Oh, my gosh. There you are. That's, that that's, is, that's, I mean, that's, that's a dedication nice. to the cause right there. It was just, just a bit, one of those, those stupid things that just happened. But how amazing. And so, yeah, obviously, this is uh, a seminal game on the on the Beeb. And obviously, Dave, who's who's uh, uh, co-hosting this, has taken his name from it. So I wonder what well, you Dave. feel about <laughs> someone taking his, He's got a name, apparently. It's not just Arcadian. <laughs> How bizarre is it for you to feel like that someone has taken something you made and used it as their their online sort of persona? Even well, I don't know. My first game was called Godbolt, and that's all. That. <laughs> there are enough things called that. That's, we're, we're good with that. <laughs> but obviously, God, this God was bolts, a, another. <laughs> okay, this now, was sure. another one that you'd seen in the arcades, or, or had they did they present it to you as? Uh, um, uh, uh, no, they, they basically should... they basically they'd seen my my uh, atom game, and they thought just a they, straight. They, yes, please. <laughs> if so, you can do that, we'll be very happy. So they were. I see. Got it. And then, did you? I mean, obviously, you had had experience with you say like something which was more like a mode five screen. Did you ever consider using a higher resolution screen and fewer colors? Was that on the um, table at the time? Not then. No. Uh, basically, I looked at the number of graphics and thought. Uh, because on the original, um, the uh, well, my original, um, the enemies didn't actually kind of rotate at all. They want they just kind of um, like slid. slid. Oh, slid! Slid, <laughs> slid, slid is not hers. It's not quite so big. Big gruesome. They slid and swooped. Um, but uh, to do it on BBC, I wanted to kind of have them actually turning around, and I thought, no, I'm just not going to have enough memory for it. Got it. Maybe I would. Maybe if I, back then I didn't know about changing the screen ratio and stuff. So maybe if I'd kind of um, squeeze the screen up so it was a bit narrower, a bit more like the original kind of aspect ratio, more portrait than landscape, maybe I'd have been able to fit it in. But this was relatively early on and the levels of sophistication and understanding of how yeah, the hardware fit together. But back those, still those, to back come. then, um, no one knew anything about 6845 or anything like that. It was all just, you know, we were, we were all just users. We weren't abusers. Right. I mean, the, oh, yeah. g given that it still has mysteries to those who are still trying to tease the last few bits of performance out of it, it's not all that surprising. <laughs> yeah, like the, these are very early days. And the original the games we were writing um, just used all the, the official kind of screw, um, screen scrolly stuff that you're, you're supposed to. And were you, again, we're not going into too much technical stuff here, but were, were these written uh, in straight assembly or how were just they? Straight, yeah, just straight assembly, yes. You know, using the um, BBC Micro's um, assembler, right? Very basic, yeah. Probably the, the the single biggest contributor, I think, to the the UK games industry getting a heads up was the fact that a lot of people had access to assembly code and assemblers straight off the bat. I think so. It was great. Yeah, I dig monsters. So here is the uh, um, the uh, the pack. The package, yeah. I'm forgetting that I'm supposed to be going through these while we're talking, and I can't do two things at once. Turns out, <laughs> so very, very nice uh, uh, view that we have here, um, and the tape. Obviously, um, was this the one that had the electron version on the other side? No, I'm, I'm no, getting myself confused with something else here. That was 3D pool. That's right. Got it. And then um, more discs and things here, and I think on the next one. Oh no, we got this. All right. So here we have a side by side of kind of like how. How things progressed between your your games, yeah, you know the, the obviously yeah. the the Atom version through to the BBC version, comparing with the arcade. I think like all of us will agree that given the fact that the arcade thing essentially had money, no object, and dedicated hardware, you did a fine fine job in software here. Thank on, you very much. Which is on, on the, just a microcontroller essentially. So awesome stuff. That's great. And this was the first time that That's you right. managed to drop your your name and maybe give us a little bit of story about why the why of of, of this okay me, back in 1982 um the games industry was in a bit of a funny old state um the the most people read about it in the daily mail and tabloids and it was <laughs> just horrible the the hype and the bullshit around it and in fact you know most most games pe people Developers were just kids um, right. being, rip, being ripped off by you know, publishers. There was not much money in it. It was just a kind of a 
um, just a mess really. And I'm, I, didn't, I didn't, didn't like the kind of the circus of it all. So I was coming down the stairs in Market Hill. And David Johnson Davis said, um, what, what name do you want on, on it? I said, oh, I thought, I just thought Orlando. And it was just one of those things that- uh, And was it did. literally a spur of the moment decision that separated- Pretty much, pretty much. I think it was in this, a similar sort of um, conversation going down the stairs where he said, oh, um, we can't call it Galaxians. Have you got any ideas? I said, Arcadians. <laughs> so yeah, that again. was it, it, that was a spur of the moment again. So yeah, but you know, back then I was on fire. You know, my, my spurs of the moments were pretty good moments. <laughs> pretty good, pretty well, good spurs. We were talking about your your tweets earlier, and I think you still are. You still have yeah. got that there. But um, so now, obviously, we have to ask the second question of like, well, Orlando, Nothing was it just the first word that popped into your head, or is there a better story? Pretty much, pretty much. Um, I had previously. Um, been accused of being called Osbert one time by someone called James Nicholas de Soir. And you know, people in, in glass houses shouldn't throw names, <laughs> names stones, <laughs> right? But James Nicholas de Soir thought I was Osbert. I said, No, no, Os uh, like literally, he just misunderstood. Mis he guessed, like, he was guessing. Money. He oh, he was guessing. He, he knew my surname was going with P, and he thought but it was it Osbert Pilchard. He guessed. Oh, Pilchard. Oh, I see. So that's also where the Pilchard, because obviously we didn't see the Pilchard uh, there, but I was going to ask about that. So Osbert yep. Pilchard was like a, a spur of the moment name he randomly gave you based on the fact that he knew your last name started with a P and nothing exactly. else about you. Exactly. Golly. Imagine and... if he'd got it right. <laughs> would... be... Reminds me of that. There's a Father Ted episode, I think, where that's a whole plot line. Um, but we digress. So where, what about the M then? Um, okay. When I was young, I used to play a lot of chess, and um, I discovered to my horror that there were four different Nick Pellings all playing chess, and the, the UK grading system was a bit random, and so I discovered that uh, my grades were being polluted and tainted by the other Nick Pellings who were much worse players than me. So I decided to add a name to my... I was Nicholas John Pelling, so I added a name, and I found I went through my uh, family tree, and found I had a very cool name called Uncle Mark, you know, Great Uncle Marshall, who was a bit, was a bit of a card, right? A bit of a chap. And um, oh, I like Marshall. I thought well, Mar I've had Marshall, so yeah, I took Marshall, added Marshall, and then 20, ten years later, found out that it made no difference. They still gave my <laughs> bloody games to other people, <laughs> so it was no use. So it oh, was all for nothing. But it's still a cool I'm name. I'm and, genuinely uh, surprised that the, the Pelling is as common as that. I, I've never heard anyone with that surname. I think it's a brilliant that surname, but apparently well, not they, unique There enough. you go. There, there were, like I say, four Nick Pellings, and they all play chess. Gosh, maybe it's just something. Uh, are they family members? Do you think it's something nope. that goes in, the, in this genetics, you know? It's just a <laughs> cool name, obviously. Obviously. Well, obviously. I think everyone would agree with that. Anyway, so <laughs> anyway, years later, um, I had a son and um, looking for a good name. Um, gave him Marshall's middle name, so it was cool. Oh, fantastic! So there is a genuine uh, M, it's, it's, uh, something it's, M Pelling uh, it, with, with Marshall. That's right. right, yeah. That's so cool. That's uh, that's the kind well, of I think, thing. I think, that, I think Marshall's a cool name. You know, I took it, it. It is. No, it is. Yeah. But it's the kind of thing that one has to. Uh, did, did you have to stealth that past your wife, or did you? Uh, no, no, we, you, we, 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 she liked it, so it's cool. Oh, good. Right. And my one of my children has a, a stealth secret name that my I only confessed to my wife three years after he was born never mind moving on <laughs> so um you're talking of chess uh yes. you actually worked on a chess game that's right not a very good chess game but a chess game <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how that came about obviously our okay. had been done and yeah acorns often acorn computing um, had a whole bunch of different directors who did different things and brought different stuff to the party arthur norman did lisp and he was a computer science professor, well, Don, I think, at Emmanuel College in Cambridge. And he was kind of like a, this nice bloke, kind of shambly. He always had kind of a um, rubbish shoes, kind of sneakers. <laughs> okay, um, that's, that's Arthur Norman. Um, I liked him, it was great. Um, but he'd written a chess program um, for the System 3, whatever it was, or whatever, whatever Bacon saw, Acorn had made before the Atom. And he was desperate for Acornsoft to bring it out on the BBC. So one of the guys said, well, okay, you know, you've done chess, you play chess. Could you bring it across? So I had this engine and, but, you know, so I had to put the, um, the graphics on and 
that kind of stuff. And I discovered, I discovered to my horror about um, a month in that actually there were some bugs in the chess program. So I had to kind of fix the bugs. Oh, but apart from that, so it was great. Was, was, was there, uh, there was AI such as it was back then in this, and presumably was the engine able to play I, against I, I, I wouldn't call it AI. <laughs> Just A. Artificial, yes. <laughs> Intelligent, Got no. It. I mean, but given that you said it was written originally for the precursor to the the, right. the atom, so presumably we're talking few a few k at most of, of memory for both the program and 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 what was going on with that. So that's that's there, an achievement. Therein lies the problem. <laughs> I see. Yeah, um, I think it's it, 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 one of these kind of um, benchmarks of uh, computer science. Like Turing, they all want to run their own, write their own chess program, and. Um, Things mark how great they are. I see. Were you were you tempted to tweak the engine in any way? You know, given your experience, I, I tweaked it. I, I did. I did tweak it. Um, I basically fixed the bugs. Right. And... <laughs> well, I, that's not so much tweaking as, as just <laughs> making it right. <laughs> yeah. If you could, you, you could castle one side, and then you, you could actually then castle the other side as well. Right. <laughs> that doesn't seem correct. Yeah. No. It goes on. <laughs> yeah. So I fixed that. And also, I kind of put a fake opening book in, so that it looked a bit more like chess. So that that, that kind of position you see on the screen there, originally would never played anything like it. Oh, over on the right hand side there, right, with yeah. the on the front cover, I yeah. see. That look, that, that's looking like, like a proper Catalan or something, um, or Queen's in, Queen's Indian, whatever it is. But um, the original one would never have done that. I see. So, yeah, adding to so I, I believe actually there is a thread on one of the forums where somebody is currently taking all the various chess programs and playing them against themselves at like ridiculous emulation speeds in order to make it like tractable. So it'd be interesting to see how it comes out. But it doesn't sound like your your hopes would be high for this particular uh, performing. I, I would be uh, pleased if it didn't crash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Let's talk about damning with faint praise. Play pleased if it didn't crash. <laughs> Oh, I'm actually kind of surprised if it didn't crash. I don't, I don't, uh, there you are. So that wasn't the only uh, other game that you wrote for Acornsoft. There was also music. Yeah, because of the um, Acorn's close links with the BBC Corporation um, TV, um, they wanted to do some musicy things. So they said, "Oh, can you make this music thing work?" They had, they had, they had a demo, and they wanted to turn it into a proper thing, but it was uh, it was never as good as I wanted it to be. Um, it just got some rather comprehensive uh, inlay instructions uh, here scanned. Um, and then obviously this is what the program looked like. So it was a mode seven program. Yes, originally it was in mode four and um, tried to kind of scroll stuff, but it, the mode four stuff just got worse and worse. Um, it just couldn't keep up. Um, but and this was also like a first program that was not a game. I mean, chess yeah. obviously is sort of on the boundary between a game and uh, you know, like a real-time game that you've been working on. So how did you feel writing uh, like usable software for, for users rather than just games? That's fine. You know, um, as I say, I, I, I just liked it. It was all right. But it, I, you know, I wanted, the original thing looked like, you know, notes on, in mode four. It was great. Um, but it just couldn't keep up with the scrolling and everything. It just wasn't fast enough. And... Um, I could have rewritten it um, with to be like to be like more like a game, but there was there just wasn't um, the appetite for the for the time. They had a very small budget and they wanted to do this on. I see. So you were somewhat hamstring by the, uh, the the brief, as it were, for, for what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. And so, were you actually physically at the Acon Soft offices doing this? I was, yes, and um, I yeah, had a lot of fun. Um, but there was lots of, lots of lovely things about working at the offices. Um, you know, lunch down the pub. It <laughs> was good. So was this, this is post-university? No, 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 this was before. Because, oh, this uh, is before university? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah. Um, because I did my all my A-levels a year early and then did Cambridge entrance and um, I had some time to, to kill. So I did, spent some months in Cambridge on those things and then went off and wrote Zalaga. Golly. Wow. Well, there you go. So you, this was before university, and but you had obviously been run, running Aardvark. So were, were you? How did you feel about working for someone else as opposed to for yourself? Um, I learned a lot. I learned a great deal. Um, 
working with people like Neil Rain and John Griffiths, John Ball, and Tim Dobson. It was, um, you know, I, I was, I was just a kid programmer, and um, they'd actually you know, thought it through a bit more, and they were, and they were happy to share. So it was a really great, really great time. Yeah, you know, I, I, I loved it. Uh... If I remember right, you when we were talked about this earlier, you, there was some drawbacks to working in an office. Yes, when the deadlines, um, they, they placed me in probably the worst seat in the house, which was um, the, the other side of a thin partition from a daisy wheel printer, <laughs> which is um, slightly quieter than a nuclear explosion, but not by much. <laughs> Yeah, that that wasn't great, and in the end, I ended up working nights um, because I just couldn't concentrate. In right. Daytime. Still, a lot of people learning about what it means to to give programmers the ability to to work a working environment conducive to yes. to their activities. Right. I'm, I'm, the, the fact that daisy wheel printers just don't exist anymore, pretty much, is <laughs> is, is a kind of a big thing. I'm I'm very pleased about that. What were they using I, the printer for? Was it like? For like internal accounting stuff, or was it for actual exactly. program? Are there other? Oh, okay. it was so. in, internal. Yeah, and fun enough, they didn't have the printer next to them. <laughs> They're like, get the spotty yeah. teenager in. He don't, he won't mind. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. And so there were there were some other versions as well. Obviously, the BBC version, didn't yeah. make it to other places. So uh, this is the German version. Was this something you did, or were you just uh, did you hand the code off? Uh, no, no, I did. Else? I did that one. They gave me the translation. You, you know, it wasn't in. it wasn't kind of that that close to the edge i think it was a bit of space right so this is not the level of uh, no bytes left over oh my gosh how are we going to squeeze in the 300 letter word no I think it was all right i think i don't i think i trimmed it a little bit but i'm not much i didn't need to do it cool so next obviously in the sequence of uh, machines was the electron um yes. let's talk a little bit about what the electron was I'm Electron is basically the BBC, but not as good. They, <laughs> Wasn't the Atom that? Yeah. The Electron sort of recapitulated the Atom, I'm afraid. I think it's a real shame um, that they, they, they cut every corner and everything was just that little bit worse. And this presumably was for, this is for cost saving reasons. They wanted a gaming computer out there. Something was sort a bit more of, affordable. I think to, it, was, it was half and half. Um, the things like the serial ULA was was a bit knackered. Um, the processor was half the speed. It's the technical term for it. Yeah, it was knackered. Um, and I think that they, they kind of fit, fit both of them into a single ULA. I think it was, as I recall, um, or just like just sort of squeezed it mercilessly. But actually, that came at the cost of the machine being not really very good. Um, and actually, it didn't make any sense. It wasn't really right. games. You know, you, you, you know, games machines need to be fast. And it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So they, they kind of, what they were trying not to do was basically um, cannibalise their BBC market. Right. That, that was their idea, I think. And but... uh, actually, they ended up being neither. Not, you know, it was neither the Acorn, Atom, nor the, Acorn, the BBC Micro, nor anything. It's a shame. It is. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I mean, that, that was, uh, well, we'll talk about some other Acorn machines later on and maybe we'll re re relive that story again. <laughs> um, but so then obviously the Electron, though, was uh, something that, that Aconsoft wanted to, to support. Um, yeah. And did you do these conversions? I think the chess worked as it was because of the right mode. Arcadians worked pretty much as it was. So it wasn't a kind of a, um, it wasn't, wasn't much, much to do, I don't think. Right, it just it was compatible enough with the things that you were doing yeah. in these relatively straightforward games. I mean, no games yes. straightforward. Don't get me wrong, but you weren't so far off pieced from and relying on hardware trickery that you couldn't just get it to run. No, it was it was all still fairly vanilla. Got it. So then, then oh, this yes. came along. Now this yes. is uh, this is obviously uh, well. This is the game that I personally remember the most of your from your repertoire um, in terms of playing it the most uh, at, at school. Uh, so tell us about this because this is an Aardvark software game you're no longer at Aquonsoft that's right, once upon a time I went to a chess tournament in Gaustel in Norway and they had a tabletop Gallagher um, just, and 
I really liked it. I thought, this is really great. Because, you know, I like Galaxians. And I thought, well, actually, this is Galaxians Plus. And they'd obviously thought about it. You, you can see all the kind of the, herit- the Galaxians heritage in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, it was, it, was, it was a bit fancier. I like the Starfield. I like the, 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 the two ships at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, I, th- I thought, yeah, this is, if I was going to do another game, this is what I'd do. And I thought, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so, with a, uh, with a cheeky Z at the front, off we went. Right, again, for, for legal reasons, you obviously couldn't call it Gallagher, but what was the, what was the, uh, the, the feeling like around those days? Was it a big deal to have to, you know, like to essentially copy or be heavily inspired by another game that was in the arcades? I think that... Um, there was so there were so many technical differences. Uh, the gameplay was never the same, um, except for things like Joust. Well, a spoiler, um, right? Yeah, we we, <laughs> we may be speaking about that in a minute. Yeah, but and you know, so, a, a friend of mine later on did um, a Pac Man version for one of those um, all in one type um, games, and uh, the random number generator was the lowest bit of the ROM. <laughs> so he had basically kind of. T- they took all those lowest bits out of the ROM and used that the table, but um, that's that's kind of how how they how they did, how they were random. So he was able to mimic Pac-Man exactly, but um, things like this, no, we know they, they were never the same. They were never going to be the same. So it was it was okay. It was okay, but obviously, if you had called it Gallagher, then there would yeah. have been much more of a problem because copyright law is very much better understood. In as much as any lawyer understands any law relating to computers at all, right? Yes, um, exactly. At least if it's the, if it's a different name, you know, like you can you can get away with it. So yeah. here we can see the the packaging, and I think when we were talking earlier about the the the, the Atom games, obviously now you've 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 come back into uh, selling your own games here, yes. but you weren't running tape to tape copying systems yourself no, at this point. No, no, this is from again in Romford, so. Um, I, I can't remember what the car's name. Giddy Park somewhere. So yeah, and then I've just yeah, I've lost my mouse pointer because I clicked in the wrong window. And here we are. So uh, yeah, so th- you actually had to then put out some advertising for this. That's uh, right. Yourself. Yes, yeah. yeah, me. How did you feel you know, running essentially a, a, f- a full software company with all the things that comes with it? Um, it was pretty quiet. <laughs> I didn't sell that many. <laughs> It wasn't it wasn't kind of a, a huge enterprise, um, but it was it was like the first steps towards. I think you know, I think I think the uh, screenshots looked looked all right. Absolutely, and, and again, like some more copy, which is is that again pelling um, word playing there. I believe it was just me, but it wasn't really great. It says works on all OSs and tubes. That's me. <laughs> that sounds uh, like I, a you. <laughs> that's, that's, so Continuous rolling, twinkling stars. Oh. Multiple missiles. That is a thing, right? That, that actually be able to fire more than once. That was that's you can see it on the screen there, on the left. Yeah, oh, there's... indeed. Yeah, there's two of them. Good point. Good point. And then, so yeah, talking of looking at the screen, uh, this is obviously a very familiar screen to to everyone um, who was participating earlier. Um, who are these people? Okay, um, NJMP is me. The, the M you know about. Uh, I see. So that you is this where you've like sort of double barreled your middle name with your both your real and fake that's right. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, CAP is my dad. JB, I can't think. SK, can't think. <laughs> can't think. PC, I can't think. RGB, can't think. Nope. Was my sister, Andy. It's probably Andy Davis. Ian, Saffron Ian. Dave, I can't remember. Oh wait, I can't think. Gosh, Nig, I uh, can't think. Nif is Neil Fox, um, an old chess playing friend of mine. All right, not not the the DJ. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, this, this this one's an atmospheric um, meteorological meteorological professor in Missouri somewhere. All right, uh, that's quite. Boff different. is Ian Boffin. Mm-hmm. Jez is Joe. Uh, is the Argonaut Jez? Jez San, yeah, my um, old boss. And Fu is Fu Katan, who you probably know as well. I do, yeah. And then um, SR, no idea. Um, OV is actually that's uh, that's O with a line through it, which is actually um, the um, Norwegian guy who was playing the game. 
Ah. And he said, oh, I said to him, oh, he was playing this game, he was really good at it. And I said, oh, I think I'll, I'll like this game. He says, that's a shame. So I said, why is that? Because then I'll have to buy BBC. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> so a killer app for the BBC. Okay, oh, there, there you are. Um, Oval on the left. I'm... I see, so, yeah. Okay, Oval. so that's right. That's, that's, so that's the original one, okay. So... Um, so for my own... Um... IAT is Ian Tidder. RAL is Richard Lawrence. Um, SK is Simon Karras. P- PC is Pete Lees, you know, Pete Edwards. Um, I can't AD is Andy you... Davis. Your memory is so good. Um, okay, from left. So it's NJMP is me, CAP is my dad. DC is Daryl Craig Elliott. Um, LPM is Louise Parr Morley. JD... Can't think. K8, can't think. PC Pigley's, Sam Karras, um, Simon Jen- SJS, Simon Jenkins, um, Andrew, uh, Andrew, Andrew Davis, Ian Tizzo, Richard Lovance, and O Strike Through Vol is the Norwegian. Is the Norwegian person. Norske. Norske. Uh, so, yeah, uh, just, just my own edification here and totally abusing the fact that uh, I'm able to ask you these questions. How did you come to know Jez? Was it just because he was just another person in the in the the same uh, sort of bedroom coder environment yes. that you were going, right. That's, I mean, was there like stage. a convention of like random bedroom coders? We, <laughs> how, how did you meet? Um, I haven't faced idea. <laughs> Fair but enough. We, but we did. Um, Fair enough. It was, a, it was a small industry then, so yeah. Cool. And then we talked a little bit about the artwork before. Yeah. Um, this is obviously the, st- the, still the like, gold still, is yeah, still very like stylish. I still like the gold and I like the kind of the clean lines. And the artwork on the spine, I like. You know, it's. I'm still very happy with it. It was certainly very striking. Yeah. And was that the sort of the intention that that the uh, with the, the clamshell case that it was it was it would show up on the on the uh, the shelves and. I just and, yeah. I just oh, wanted it to look nice. That's all. It wasn't it wasn't a big thing. It just wanted to look nice. And so this obviously was further up the 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 list of of uh, you you wanted to get this out to more places presumably so how how are you doing with dealing with distribution at this point well people were very happy to buy it um, there were some very large distributors um, one was called micro dealer that was the largest one of the lot unfortunately micro dealer um, went went bang oh at this time um, and because I wasn't really um, part of the club I, I I found out about it too late and all the people who knew what was going on had basically uh, pulled their stock out of it. So I lost a load of stock. And oh, I see. It wasn't great. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's, so that's where being a little guy didn't, didn't, pay, off. Yeah, didn't yeah. pay off for you there, right? And also they were part of, you know, Statesoft was part of them. They had the great idea of taking American games and, um, and you know, bringing them across to the UK to the platforms. But um, Frack on the 64, Commodore 64, um, that that also went down with micro dealer, and I didn't receive a penny from that either. So oh no, so well, that we've got a few. So that yeah, was slides kind of, about some of that. All gone. Sorry. I... So that was kind of the point where um, I sort of just lost a bit of interest. It wasn't great. And uh, we should probably talk about the electron version here. So obviously you yes. you chose to do uh, an electron version as well to capture that part of the market. Yeah. Um, I think it looked pretty good considering it was mode five. Oh, it was great. It looks amazing. I, mean, that, I think when I when I first saw this this slide, it's when I thought, do you know what a Mode One version might have looked pretty awesome too? It would. I mean, back then, um, Mode Two was considered um, the whizziest of the whiz, mm-hmm. and everyone went, "Oh yeah, Mode, it's Mode Two, Mode Two. Um, and you know, in retrospect, maybe I could have got away with maybe it was Mode One and um, just tightened it up a bit because, uh, like I say, as you can see on the right. It looks pretty good in mode five. It it certainly does. It hasn't lost a lot, really. No, no, exactly. Um, and here we can see the again the sort of the theme that uh, the that, progression the, the progression here. So like, the one that I love is the uh, the roller skating aardvark. <laughs> it's like he's now spilling his paint pot. And how did that come about? Is that just paint started? It was just silly. <laughs> Is this more a question of like you hand it off to the illustrator and you kind of sign off and say, yeah, that looks good. We'll have that one on the box, please. Um, they would have done some sketches and it was kind of like frack, but a bit turbo. It was a little bit faster. 
again, um, mode four. Oh, I've just knocked all my notes over. Never mind. Um, cool. And so we've talked a little bit about distribution and um, also yeah. about how you're getting into short. So it was through the distributor and um, That's through right. this, this company around the corner that you, or around the corner, sorry, in um, Giddy Park somewhere. Right. So I think we've done that one there. Um, next. Next. Okay. Uh, yeah. More more things that had to be uh, more copy. We, we've seen this wonderful uh, advert before. And then, I mean, you can see the progression there. The Galaxian advert, they're looking less professional, um, being brutally honest with you, than, say, the, the Orlando's back Zaliga one. Well, you know, that's and what then, happens when you get a PR, PR guy and a professional artist, and it's, it's, you can, rather than me on a bit of paper. Oh, so that's your aardvark there on, on the left-hand yes, side? Yes, it is. Oh, my golly. And again, you were like age 15, 16 at this point. Yes. So, I mean, that's pretty amazing by anyone's standards. That you not only wrote the game and the music and did the artwork in the game, you drew the picture that goes on the in the advert and placed it in, in the, some form of press there. Is that... That was the uh, back of your computer, I think. So cool. And someone did genuinely... I say, it makes Astro Buzz look like a bunch of geriatrics. They genuinely say that. Oh, that isn't just you make it. A, no, no. ACD it's a, a, a referred to. Is that? A, do you know? remember who that person is? Or is that um, something else? I don't remember. Might be Andy Dyson. Might be. <laughs> and you can put the sound <laughs> of the stereo, which we talked about as well, which is yes. a, a cool thing. But So one other thing that you did in your games, which given, again, how small uh, an indus- uh, a show you were running at the time was... Was, was put these competitions in. How did that come to your mind and how did it pan out? Um, I just had an answer phone on the phone number and uh, people would send it in, phone it out and leave it. Sometimes at all times of the night. <laughs> and obviously they just had finished their six hour session. <laughs> Hyper-caffeinated and, and, and they would wired. for the phone. <laughs> I have to tell you this. My score is... Is that how they sounded by, by that point? Is that the? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Honestly. And and then what did you? I mean, so did you have a recorded message that had like essentially the uh, uh, read out high score table thus far, and you would update it weekly or something? How, um, how did, I did, it actually I did work? that for a bit, but then basically um, it just, the, sc- the scores got silly, and um, some somebody would play would, would literally played it for a week. I think it was. Holy cow. So there, was well, there... they, 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 what they did, they found a way that um, they could basically um, shoot all bar the leftmost one of a of a screen, and then right. park, then park their their base on the other side, and it would never quite get over. Oh, and then they could have a break, they could go go to sleep, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> carry on the next day. <laughs> That's dedication, though. Dedication. So it was. I mean, famously, uh, the original Pac Man has like a, a level 252 or something or 255 uh basically gets into a state where it will never ever complete it so you're starting to read rom as being the the the, the layout it, yes. would zaliga go on forever do you know or would there be an end i think i think it would go on forever i think it was basically i think i kind of gave a cap to how difficult it was and um believing that no one would ever survive it but they did right but they did of course right <laughs> i mean and zaliga obviously is an absolute classic it's so playable it's so fun and you, uh, you know even picking it up now like it's the kind of game i can give my kids and just say hey give it a go and they're like straight on and go they they get it they understand it it's, it's there's nothing complicated yeah. it's just good old-fashioned fun and so That's you great. know it's obviously part of the the heritage of of uh, uh, the community is is the con- is to take your games in particular which just seem to be very amenable to the high score challenges that we run and so you can see here a list of all the folks that have uh, have championed in your games in previous runs. Yes. Uh, There's quite a few. And, and winning, uh, winning, Lisa, I can't think what the right word is here, but like fittingly, that's we are, fittingly, Arcadian Dave down there in the bottom right-hand corner did in fact come first in Arcadian, which which seems about right. And I'm very pleased to see it. I'd be disappointed <laughs> otherwise. Well done, Dave. And then I'm going to pause briefly here and um, we... we I don't know if you noticed or announced to you that um, we did another run through today on a couple of your games. And I'm going to let Ed and I, Dave, okay, Dean, you might have to help me with this bit. <laughs> it's, How we... it's red, so it needs to be reloaded. Aha! 
Okay. It will All right, go I'm gonna... black when the, the following slide is. Uh... I see. Okay. I'm going to reload this one. So I need to yeah. oh, hang on a second. Hit escape in that one there. Aha. Oops. Reload the page and then do. Here again. Drum roll. Move my notes off of there. Okay. Thank you. And you did tell me this as well, Dave. I'm sorry. This is all completely my fault. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. We have today's Zaliga and Frack winners. Now, well done, Sarah want... Walker and Chris N. Well done. And, I, I, I'm and everyone else, really. Yeah, it was it was an awful lot of fun as well. I think the, for a bunch of us, myself included, it was the first time I'd played certainly Frack in oh, too, too long. But that's an amazing thing. So congratulations, Sarah. Hey, well done. Yeah, there were basically two heavy hitters on your games today, and one was Chris, but Sarah was a heavy hitter overall. Twice. So Sarah's name, you can see the cup on the right-hand side. We run this A-bug uh, every month, and she's uh, the winner of this month, so you're forever embellished on that cup, Sarah. Congratulations. Very impressed. Thanks. Congratulations, Sarah. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for playing it. I'm glad you liked it. On to, on to Frack, and the iconic game, and of your one that doesn't have an obvious link to an existing game either. So let's talk about the, what, where this came from. Where did this idea come from? Where does the name come from? Okay, when I was writing Zaliga, I, had, I started to form a plan, and I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, but I didn't know quite how I was going to do it. What I wanted to do was like a Japanese arcade game and in mode one um, with cartoon outlines and I didn't want it to be violent. I didn't want explosions. I didn't mm -hmm. want people, anything to die. I didn't want to be shooting. And But I didn't want it to be like a ab completely abstract thing. So I wanted it to be uh, have character and so I started doing demos. Now, my friend Ian um, Boff, Ian Boffin, mm -hmm. had, he, he loved arcade games and he was always like making up his own versions of them and sketching them. And one of his was called Caveman Capers, which is um, a bit like an arcade game, but it was his take on it. And I kind of liked bits of it and kind of didn't like the other bits. So I started with that and just kind of refined it and refined it and refined it. And then kind of took a few steps sideways and kind of made it my own, really. Um, it was definitely still a caveman game and you were still jumping from logs, but the yo-yo was a bit of a nice spin. <laughs> no pun in... Oh, no, probably pun intended, knowing you. It was intended, yeah. yeah so, so that was a bit of fun. Um, and it just it kind of... It just felt natural. It just, it, it, it just all kind of seemed to fall into place. So, yeah. And the yeah the yo-yo mechanic again was is is both cunning because of the game related mechanic of the fact that you're vulnerable while you're you're throwing it, which is exactly. just great from a game balance point of view. But also, as you you alluded, it's not non-violent. I mean, wh who knows what happens to the monsters once they've shuffled off their far right hand so side of the screen? Perhaps they are minced, um, but we don't see it. We don't see it. Uh, just can imagine what it, the life off screen. Um. <laughs> <laughs> they have, where they have a very productive and happy life, raise children, yes. you know, all the things that monsters yes. want to do when they're not sat exactly. on exactly. logs <laughs> levitating in space. So, so that's kind of the, the long and short of it, really. I, I, I definitely wanted um, a, a very specific thing. And, um, and I, I, I was like merciless in my pursuit of that thing. Um, that I, I I really really didn't want to kind of compromise on anything, and that was that was kind of um, the, the beauty of Frack more than anything was that it was still at a time in my life when um, I didn't need to compromise. So, so you were you had you were running your own business at this time, and presumably you were not not to get into details, but solvent enough to be able to give yourself the room to exactly. take your time to do it right, which is a rare exactly. luxury. Exactly, um, and it was all. It was it was a really great time, you know, for me. As um, the things like microdealer going down and um, that kind of, and, the, and the whole piracy thing. 
Mm-hmm. Spoilers. Um, Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> but the kind of like soured, soured the dream. But the um, in terms of a, of a creative thing, um, Frack ticked all the boxes that I wanted from it. It really, really did exactly what I was hoping for. Um, and yeah, it was great. So and it's it's it's, it's, a rare, tune, it's a rare thing. Silly yeah, name. Yes. Um, tell us about the name, actually. Um, Louise Palmorley, the, the LPM on screen. Um, she was a friend of my of Daryl, DC Daryl, Daryl Craig Eggert. And <laughs> right. she used to say, oh, frick, frick, frick. And she was annoyed because um, they were both, I think they're, I think they're both um, a kind of Christian drama group. And uh, she wouldn't say. Frick, you wouldn't frick. say the other obvious. The other, one, the other one, no. The other one. So she would say, frick, frick, frick. And I, I, I thought it was quite endearing, quite liked it. So, and then um, another friend of mine, um, his mum was, was adamant that um, catchy names had to be short and uh, percussive. Mm-hmm. I thought, short and percussive. Frick, frack, frack, frack. And then it just stuck. It just stuck. And because, I mean, uh, it's, when, yeah, you're, when, you're, when, you, when you came around eyes, you have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's that, that no one else was doing that at that time, right? I don't remember any other things no. where you had, you know, you'd characterized, you'd given the, the caveman some actual, like, character by by making him say something when he died. He was obviously upset, right? He'd fallen off the bottom yeah. of the screen, who knows to what dreadful peril. And, of course, but, he's frustrated, as indeed was the player, as we we, we saw yes. earlier in the in the playthrough, the high school playthrough. <laughs> but, you know, in, in a way, it was just nice. Um even like like thirty five years later, it still looks lovely. You don't look at that game and think, "Oh, that's a bit rubbish." You know, no, if, if, no. if you think if, if you think oh, I, saw, I saw a game on um, Nicky and Bunty the other day. What was it? Uh, Supergram. Oh Jesus! Christ. <laughs> what? Spare me, oh Lord! Oh, but that was the same time. You know, that's, that was uh, not not from from the air. And my game was beside that. And I think, actually, my game looks pretty good. It's, it still looks great. It yeah. still looks great. It's still very clear and crisp and everything. Yeah, it's great. And the, these, the, the little monsters here are really, again, good, great characterizations. Um, yeah. you, the programming was beyond belief. Um, presumably, you wrote that. So that was very... Um, uh, uh, well, I think the thing is, what, what, what ends up with... Um, the, this is the part of programming these games that um, you won't know unless you've done it, is that um, whatever idea you start out with, you can't fit it in. You just can't fit it in. There's, there's, you, you, it's just com- you just can't do it. And then you think, oh, maybe if I do it like this, oh, and you do it like that. And then, well, maybe I do this as well. And you kind of like snip away. And think, oh, I can save 10 bytes by, by doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and basically... You kind of like snip and snip and snip and snip, and you've got you constantly bring it down, and then finally, finally, it fits, and go well. And so you know you've been playing this thing, and, and um, you can't quite believe you've done it. It's, it's a kind of a, it's, it's a strange catharsis thing at the end, that you just can't. How can you fit it in? But you That's- did. But it was, I mean, without getting all too old manny about it, like that was, it was craftsmanship to, to, to fit something that you would, obviously you had a very clear vision about what you wanted or you, you, had, yeah. least, you, you had a clear idea about the, uh, the, have, the level of detail and the, when you knew it, it would be right. Yes. Um, and and, the, and then, there, were, there were some things that I, I just couldn't do. Um, for example, in the original, in the original frack, when I was writing it, I, I wanted the scrubbly to go left and right along platforms Poglets to go up and down, and the hooter to kind of bounce. Um, but when I, you know, as I, that, I wrote the code and it did, and, that, and damn, this was great, um, except that it was just too slow. It was just, uh, you know, right. It, it kind of halved the speed of the game, and so, so it sort of it turned it into a. Presumably, it would have been much more of an arcade game than it is a puzzle game, as it is right now. It was so a, a, a little, a little bit more, yes, a little bit more twitchy. But I, it, it just wasn't, the graphics were just too big for the BBC to do at that speed. So yeah. first of all, I got rid of the scrubbly moving and then I got rid of the poglet moving. And that, so I let, ended up the hooter. I thought, well, well, that's quite small. Maybe I'll, 
even that was too smooth. So you know, right. that, that was out, couldn't, couldn't move that as well. So, so were the were the the, the, the bubbles and the, sorry the balloons and the, the the knives were they always in or were they added to sort they of were, be the were, moving thing? No, no, they were always in. Right. But I, I wanted the scrubbing pocket hooter to move as well. Um, that's just how. It, but I, so when I did the kind of the PC remake, I, I put them in moving again, like they had originally. Because got um, it. That's yeah. there was the original intentions, like the director's yeah. cut of it. Exactly. Exactly. So but, while we're on this 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 great little pitch here, for which uh, we say thanks to Retro Gamer for letting us use or for using, um, yep. it says in the middle here it says uh, that Poglet. You've mentioned your sister a couple of times actually, but Poglet right. was her nickname. That's right. Yeah. How does she feel about a that? I mean, presumably she knows her nickname was Poglet, right? But <laughs> the being immortalized as a strange monkey thing. Well, she had. Um, also, when she was born, she had kangaroo feet that she could, t- 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 could touch her. <laughs> what does knees. that mean? She had a very, very long feet and um, short legs. I she see. Could, she, okay. she could touch her knees. With her feet? Yes. Oh, wow. So she was kind of a um, bit ect- ectomorphic. <laughs> <laughs> and is, is Scrubbly your favourite? I think, um, yes. I think Scrubbly was... That, that was drawn by Dal Craig Elliott. Craig Elliott. And he was really... Yeah, he, was, he worked really hard on that. He would, like, take each pixel in and put it out. Yeah, and again, he had a very clear idea of what he wanted. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, if you try and take any pixel out now, you'll see the same thing. You, you, you know, it's it, it's kind of perfect. It is. It's pixel art is still one of those amazing. Yeah, uh, I love it. Uh, take just there are people who are just good at it. I've worked with some people before, and they just the things they can do. And you're like, how how can I tell that that well that is? It's only an eight by eight thing, but I can I know what you've drawn there. It's amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, something that I didn't know for a very long time, like probably fairly recently, um, <laughs> is that the level one, um, well, I think you can see it. If you, Now you can see the whole level one. So <laughs> what was behind the thought processes in that? Did it just happen that way? Did you just doodle it that way and it come I, I out? Just, I just liked it. I, 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 again, this was part of, um, it, this came very, very early on in the game. And I just laid it out, saying frack. And... I just liked it. it. It kind of just, it just worked. So yeah, why would you and touch sort of, it? Yeah, sort of dovetails into your your like of uh, sort of. Love of it's not really cryptography. It's well steganography there, but like steganography. not many people would have noticed that <laughs> that it says that. No, no. Well, I mean, maybe I'm just trying to excuse my own and not realize. No, no, no. no. It's, 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 I think most people didn't notice it. <laughs> so were you tempted to go with words for the other levels? Um, no, that's that just for that one. Because this obviously, this one here with all of the, yes. the poglets, which I've just been told, and I agree, actually, someone has just said to me, that looks a little bit like Salacious Crumb. Was there ever any uh, Star Wars inspiration behind Poglet no, being no, that? No. no, that was just how it no. came out. So more, was there a process? That, it was just your sister, right. Yeah. Was there a process that you went through? Were there many levels that you designed and you paired it back to these ones? Or were, were these there were some the more. There, there were some more, but I just ran out of space. Yeah. Just, um, and I, I, I discovered when I was started converting it that I, I'd actually wasted 200 bytes. Oh, criminal. <laughs> Which I could have fit another level in, 200 bytes. But anyway. How different the world would have been. So then how is it the case that the Electron version here has so many more levels? You've just That's been mo- laboring the point that it's a, a slightly rubbish BBC micro, and now you're telling us, but you could put more, more game, more levels in. What was going on there? Mode four, mate, black and white. <laughs> right, you got the the memory you saved from the screen. Ten k. Yeah, count, count those bytes. Ten thousand bytes. Ten thousand. Nowadays, you can't. Bytes. You can't like, have a temporary buffer for a string in less than that. Anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, old and grumpy. But look at these amazing <laughs> levels here. So the, the level two and level was very different. That, that, that doesn't look like the level two that we had. Um, did you? So these were these ones that were rejects from the original frat that you couldn't fit in, or did you go? go level to, four is basically the old level two. Oh, so it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then and so on, so on. I, I love level uh, level five's giant um, uh, list of um, uh, monsters. There, I can't start with the scrub list, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that must have been very satisfying to to sit there with a the yo-yo and and zhoo, through. We were saying how like emotive that sound is, right? That's the sound that a emo- yo-yo makes when you in our, uh, all of our minds in real uh, life. Yeah, absolutely. That's 
yeah, we'll look yeah. at all these levels. If only, if only they'd have made it to the beat. I might have seen them. And then obviously but there was an editor go, if, as if, well. If you go back. Oh, screen, yeah, sure. Go back. Um, the bottom left on level eight, uh, you can actually see that I've drawn a picture of a scrubbly there. Oh. There you are. So there are some still some hidden gems, yeah. hidden to, our, to me anyway. Because that's great. Uh, but yeah, you could draw your own in uh, the Electron version that's as right. well. That's fun. So that was pretty pretty cool. Could you so save what, anything, or is you it could? Just, yes, yeah. That's, a, them, that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, for 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 our like um, school lunchtime club, Magic Mushrooms was the thing that people were passing around, like the save levels. That was like the first experience I had where you could kind of make your own levels. Um, do yeah. do you know that people were doing similar things with 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 Frack on the Electron, or was it just too? No, it was, it was one thing I always wanted in the original game as well, but I couldn't fit it in. Just Got it. Those things. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant stuff. All right, we have completely blown through the time budget, so um, let's have a quick look. <laughs> I'm going to try and re regroup a little bit, but... Uh... So there, we've got three different um, screens here that have come off of various different versions of the, uh, the Electron version, by the looks of it. Um, do you remember anything about the differences here? Or? Nothing at all. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Binary finery sounds like my kind of word, word play, but everything else. So that third one there came off of the um, of version three that, that you have no memory of, right? Yep, not at all. Was it, was it again, was this the, the, the living at large or, that means your memory was gone or is it just too much no, stuff I, going on? Just don't remember. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then there was an, this, this uh, editor. View shape, yeah. View shape. Um, tell us a little bit about view shape. Um, when I was doing um, Zalaga, I wanted to edit graphics and I didn't have anything good to edit, edit them in. And um, so for one of the things I did very early on, very, very early on in FRAC, was write my own um, editor on. So that anytime I wanted to edit a graphic, I could just ed edit it. So uh, it was called ViewShape because, of course, the view is the word processor. Um, so <laughs> I see, of course. The, I was thinking, why not view? Yeah. Hence V star star W. And um, I think everyone at Acornsoft had a copy of this as well. So it was, it was fun. So it's like the de facto sprite editor for, for pretty Acornsoft. Much, pretty much. And I think lots of people had it. And if you can see on the right there, you can see Trog with a club, which was very, very early graphics. And before I got rid of the club and placed it with the yo yo. So you can actually date that pretty much. Gosh. To, um, kind of October 1983. Yeah. That's so cool. So that's sort of previously under this was like the original idea of before you sort of really doubled down on the, the non violence here that he had a, exactly, a spiky exactly. club. Yes. And um, I believe thing, you've done a video of this where you demonstrate how to use U shape before, is that? And there's one on, on YouTube that's somewhere. Right, yes, with... That's right. Yeah. That's cool. So. Um, it's, I'm being told it's the Frax Back A Bug video from August. Correct. So if yes. people want to go and look at that, then uh, they can go and see more about how to use view shape. I think it's con um, con control cursor keys. Control cursor, right. Okay, we're going to briefly talk about this because very famously, or yes. infamously, um, there were individuals who took Frack and changed the graphics and the name. Um, do you want to just say a couple of words, or shall I do, go to the um, next slide? Yeah, my, my, my couple of words are no thanks. <laughs> right. I, I'll i be honest with you, in the sort of preparing for this, I did look at the graphics, and I was actually horrified as to how horrible they are. And like, they are, that's they are saying something, so Every, I don't... Everyone tells me they're horrible. And... So, yeah, drawing a line under that, no questions <laughs> on that, thank you. Okay, yeah. so we, we've got some numbers here that you've, you've, you've kindly shared with us. Yep. Um, so the... This is clearly not the same number of, of copies of these things that were going that, that were around. Because again, if no. my uh, computer club at, uh, the, you know, I keep wanting to say university at school cool. was to go by, um, I could probably account for almost a third of the Zalika <laughs> copies by just people I knew. So yeah. what was going on? Um, piracy. There were lots, lots and lots of piracy. I think to be fair, um, these games were sold to kids. And eight pounds ninety five doesn't sound like a lot now, but in in kind of 19, no, 2021 numbers, that's about thirty quid. 
So, right, so it's um, kind of the same price as a decent-ish game these days. Well, yeah, more like fifty yeah. actually. But well, yeah, but but it's a substantial amount of money for someone. It, it is. It is. Earning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, there was a lot of incentive to to pirate because it wasn't really thing. It was only later when uh, Mastertronic um, kind of started selling literally pocket money games. But yeah, to, but to, to, to do that, you had to have so many things lined up. You had to have real, a much better control of the distribution. And so, you know, the other, so Mastertronic were able to sell it in a different way through um, sweet shops and things. Right. And um, so th that, that's how they managed to kind of break the back of it. But the um, distributors like uh, Microsoft were taking a big sl slice and shops too. So everyone was kind of... Um, you know, everyone in the chain was getting their slice out of the money. Do you, do you so recall that's... actually what the kind of margins were like? So you were selling them for, as you say, eight quid. Um, how much eight were you months, seeing? Uh, I was seeing less than half, yeah. So, gosh. Yeah, that's yeah. how it was. So the, so the, the economics weren't great. Um, so there's a lot of reason that, the, that uh, kids would want to actually take on the challenge of pirating it and they had a lot of kids had more fun pirating it than actually playing it. I, from from personal experience, uh, that is kind of how I got into computing. Uh, so you know, <laughs> it's it's definitely a thing, right? It's, it's not unusual. unusual. It's interesting unusual. problem solving, right? It's problem, it's problem solving. solving. You know, you, you basically give a kid a very interesting problem to solve, that right? Most, which has a, a, a very positive benefit at the end as well. <laughs> Payoff, right? Right. For them and can for I get friends. my kids to write a Python piece of code? No, because they can go and play Minecraft immediately. Could we? <laughs> you know, you know, it's like you get the payoff, yeah. right? Yeah, that's basically it. So, so extremely it, famously, you included this. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It didn't play the pirate theme. If, if it was, the, it just that was just there for fun. And I mean, we're going to have to because it's so good. I hope that's not deafening to everybody. So good, love it. I, as I recall, that went round my school as a separate thing. Someone just took that out and saved yeah. it, and we would just have pug wash as a separate thing. Yeah, that was very um, common. Yeah. So that's yeah. You've made your mark there, and, and I think you know. There's there's now a little bit of. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I thought, this is one I didn't know about. This is the electron version, which is even better from a musical point of view. And I'm going to subject you to all to this. Listen to this. So good. All right, I'm gonna pause it though just to, for that. But so, was, was this something that you had the sheet music to? Or are you working this out yourself? Or I, I was writing songs. I've always written songs. I've written probably a thousand songs. So. Golly. So you, yeah. you you're a genuine polymath then, with with everything being you know graphics, uh, some of the graphics at least, and obviously yeah. the game and the design and the music and in novel music at that. That's really quite something. Yeah, you know, I think uh, back from those days. The expectation was that you would write pretty much all of it yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, so the, it was only kind of much later that people started to write, uh, to, yeah, separate out the sound or the graphics to other, or the, even the level design to other people. Into sort of yeah. separate jobs, right? Yeah, yeah, it was just the programmer was everything. Yeah. Got it. But obviously, I think, you know, quite reasonably, the fact that Frack was everywhere, and Zaliga was everywhere, and you were not seeing the the riches coming in was taking a toll on your. I don't think it's unreasonable to say your mental health, <laughs> because here are some things that are clearly the very frustrated person wrote these REM statements. Well, yes, that would be that would be that would be a very frustrated me. It was very hard though. Um, you, you can understand why um, you're writing these things and. Um, people ripping them off and then just give them to everybody. I think, well, really? Okay. Well, you know, was there was there an upside to piracy? Not really. I mean, uh, other than, and this is an extreme fringe thing, um, teaching 15-year-old me uh, how to uh, uh, program. <laughs> but that's only for me, and not for the persons that were, were doing it. But th this was interesting. This got put ins inserted into the slides later on. So do you want to talk a little bit about what this is? Um, I, very occasionally, I got um, 
taunting postcards from um, pirates. This was one, uh, one from Wales, from Swansea. You can see 1984 in the, on the postcard. Says, We've escaped from the maze of twisty little passages all the same and survived the Ac Akron soft, so that they've kind of not yeah. spelt it the same way that yeah. you did. So, uh, it's, it's, yeah. so basically, it's, it's an excellent game, even better protection, but not quite good enough. <laughs> Lots of love. Grandmaster Hack and the Furious Frack crackers, crackers, where he's got an extra C in there, though. Oh, bless him. Yeah, we, we do, so I'm being told here we should, we should say whoever po sent this postcard needs to come clean. You know, <laughs> make yourself known now. I'm sure an amnesty can be arranged. It's an amnesty, yes. Yeah, we're, you're not going to take anyone to, to court over this. No, so, no. actually, on the subject of... Um, of co correspondence obviously you'd set up the the phone lines and you were getting high scores at one stage yeah. did you get much other uh, other correspondence that somebody's asked here graham sanderson's asked this did you get a lot of letters from hapless nerdy teen coders which i think is an unfortunate uh, phraseology but probably quite accurate uh, back um, in the day he I, says i, got, I, I got sent got, one yeah. oh go on i got i got lots of um game designs from people saying oh this, here's my game and they were I think fairly hapless is is a nice way of describing them. <laughs> um, so, so Graham says he he sent you a letter from from for help to Orlando in ninety eight uh, or eighty seven eighty eight and found after he found his summer holiday single pixel vertical scroller didn't work except on his monitor, which presumably is an allusion to some of the cr tricks you were playing on uh, Fire Track, which we'll get to shortly. Do you not. recall that letter or did it I don't recall that letter. I don't recall that letter. Oh, we'll, we'll blame um, um, the postal service. I'm sure you would have. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. This is uh, my phone oh. as well. I uh, don't know how to spotlight you now. I need okay. to make bellings. Is there a magical way of making you spotlight video? I think. Did that work? Okay. No. Um, I can't see you on my okay. phone. But... I, I can check, you probably be able to see the kind of the um, pictures on the back. The very, very high tech. Let me stop my share, and then I think that'll make you visible. There you are. I can see you at least. I hope everyone else. Okay. So, what is what are you showing us here? This is um, dear Ardvoxoft. I have got the BBC, and I have made up a game, and would like you to read it and send it back on a tape. <laughs> the name of the game is Space Seventy Six. Oh, so the object of the game is to shoot the two green triangles, and if you do that, they will not disappear, but you will get ten points. <laughs> if you miss one, you will lose a life, three lives. And if you get 60 points, you go on to level two, which has one triangle with the art. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you, have you got many of those? Um, a few, not many, but that was um, one, I, one I kept because it was quite spectacular. Bad. Right. I just need to remember how there we are. I've got everything set back up again. So around this time, and as a result of some of the things that we've just been talking about aardvark was no more and pretty much yeah very I, carried sad. On, I carried on with the name for um doing stuff but right so you said aardvark as a company it, it was it, the industry was changing the bbc was ending um the games that were coming out um were, were kind of different and you know it was, it was kind of just a difficult difference all the time yeah and but I mean, it left you left really did leave a mark. I mean, this is this is an image that was found on the internet, and I believe is fan art, right? So people have drawn this. Um, you you had no memory of this, right? No, no, no. If you look at the um, the, the links on the left, that's kind of like the chain on um, the. Oh yeah, it's great. Someone's put a lot of love into that one. That's that's, that's pretty special. That must be give you a, a warm fuzzy feeling that you made such an impact that folks. Oh, that's someone someone loves it. Bless them. Yeah, bless them. So moving on to the single. Talking of single pixel scrolling. Um, yes. Fire track. Tell us about fire track. This is like such an amazing technological feat. But again, just talk about the the game itself. Well, obviously, I love Star Wars. It was. Um, Having done um, Galaxians and Zalaga, um, the next the next kind of generation up was Star Wars. And it's a, if you've played Star Wars, it's just a lovely game. It's, it just feels just nice. Um, but I wanted to again do my version of it, so I did. And then this was, you know, pretty 
impressive at the time for for the well still now i mean it for, for the technological um uh tricks that you used um, were, were these things that you worked out yourself were they things yes. that so this was a real novel i mean i remember just being game changing when i when i saw it and went oh my god how are you even able to do that that's not something that the, the system can do it just took a while i i, I just knew what I knew what I wanted to do. I, you know, I really wanted to do a vertical scroller, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew that you could um, set the offset on sixty-eight forty-five to a single pixel, but the, that, um, but it wouldn't wouldn't um, be stable. Mm -hmm. So you could, could do like seven steps, and then when you tried to kind of reset it, it would like jud judder. Yeah. So um, I thought there has to be a way of doing this. Has to be doing this. And in the end, I came up with a way of creating like effectively two screens with one where one was the, the inverse of the other. So if one, if one was five, the other would be two. Got it. And so on. So they, all, they always add up to seven. So you had a kind of rock st steady sort of um, screen refresh rate, even if one was slightly upset. And luckily, it worked. Or else wow. I wouldn't have had a good... Well, we'll definitely dive into that some other time when we've, we've yeah. got more tech tech time. But so th this was um, this was then published. Obviously, you were still writing games as Aardvark, yes. um, but you were you had a publisher now. You were sort of back yeah. more like to the traditional publisher. Um, well, avenue, what so. became the, became the traditional publisher? Uh, yes and no. Um, it was it was a bit. It was a difficult old time. Very difficult old time. But um, the relationship between uh, publishers, and there was an agent called Jackie Lyons in the middle. And oh gosh, me. more middle people. <laughs> yeah, and um, I didn't. What I didn't like very much, when I found out halfway through the project, was actually that um, Jackie Lyons was being paid by them as well. So she was taking money from both sides. So she wasn't really much of an agent. Oh, and um, that was a bit of a point of contention, let's say. So I wasn't very impressed. And Firetrack had quite a storyline behind it, quite a, a, a yeah. world you built. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. This, so was, this is you this again, was... sort of flexing your your, uh, your 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 author aspect of your personality and, and skill yeah. set. I wrote, I wrote a whole lot of stuff for it as well, um, which I think it just got lost in the uh, depths of time. <laughs> it may be in the lost somewhere, I don't know. But um, yeah, I had a very and um, I had a very kind of big picture in my head, including music. Yes, oh, there we are. I got, I got a little bit ahead of myself there, but that, um, yeah, there were so the music, which we'll play shortly as we're about to have a little break. Um, the music had lyrics. Tell us about that. What was the, yeah, what was the rationale? Um, it was fun. I, I... <laughs> good, good reason. No, that's, that's the reason for everything, isn't it? If you're not writing games and it's not fun, you're doing the wrong thing. It's supposed to be fun. Um, you can overthink stuff, but actually, I like writing music. I've written a thousand songs, including a musical on the half musicals um, and loads Golly. of other stuff. Um, so I, I, I always like it, and I, I just find it easier and more fun to write lyrics at the same time. So I did. And we uh, we we were going to get you to sing this. <laughs> we weren't going to get you to sing this. Sorry, but <laughs> but um, we're going to take a break. Um, okay at this point and I'm going to put the music on and you can uh, folks can actually like sing along in their head I think it's pretty obvious once the melody comes in where the words fit in it's, it's well it scans very well so uh, so at this point it's the the time for an interlude so I think we're going to stretch our legs we are running extremely over um, so I'm going to chat with with Dave a bit and make sure we're we can get everything back on track um, but we're going to take a short break now this piece of music I think is six minutes long so you can sit and listen to it and uh, we'll check in again at the end of the music. So if anyone needs to do what you need to do, stretch your legs, um, we'll be back and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some other games of Nick's after the break. See you in a second.
how did you score all of this music? Did you use a music tool? And have you seen B track? Your music is stunning. No, I didn't use a tool for that. This was um, a long time before MIDI was taking off. Um, I basically just wrote it in you know, data statements. Nothing, nothing clever. You just literally sat down and wrote out numbers into data statements. Well, not quite. I would write. Um, I would write like C three for like uh, a C that's three beats long. Got it. And then turn that into you know, bytes. So it wasn't it wasn't a big clever thing. It was just nice. But um, yeah, but, uh, I actually find it easier to do that than to record in MIDI because Golly. actually because. Um, I find um, you lose, you, you kind of try too hard when you try and record things. Uh, so computer music is, is, isn't the same as real music, it's different. And <laughs> I, I, I kind of like the artificiality of it. It's kind of a bit, a bit more stagey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like, there's, it, I mean, there's, there's definitely a connection, and this is totally off base, but there's a definitely a connection between uh, maths and music um and there's definitely sort of a connection between i think programming and both maths and music so i think there's a kind of a confluence there where you can see a pattern and you that that's where the musicality comes out of like the patterns and the things and you can represent that perhaps more rigorously in in code form than you could be as by exactly by, exactly by performing it I, I think that um if there are plenty of programmers i met who don't have a aren't very musical right and, I think a lot of that is reflected in the code they write as well. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. There's a book for you. Yeah. Is, do musical programmers, are, are musical programmers better than non-musical programmers? I, I'd read that. I think <laughs> Only because I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> like a bit biased me. Um, you know, programming is about patterns to a, certain, to a very large degree. Right. And um, the, the better your code, the, the more in tune with the patterns it seems to be, I think. Got it. Right. Well, I am. I'm now all up to date. I'm gonna. We're gonna crack on with uh, with three D pool. Hooray! Which was amazing. Tell us the story of three D pool. Okay. Um, if you've ever seen a an arcade game called Afterburner. Oh, classic! Of course. Which I, which I loved a bit. Um, you know, expensive, had... if I recall right, especially if you had one of the ones that had like the thing that moved around. Yeah, oh. yeah, very expensive. Um, big top top end thing. They also had a nice um, a sphere based a track mode with kind of like patterns of spheres moving around. The, the name Afterburner was written in balls that, that span round. I remember. That's right. Yeah. So basically, for fun, I wrote um, Afterburner um, demo for the for the balls. Of no, course, there's, there's a game. <laughs> The game itself was way out of the league of of uh, home machines, but the demo was quite good, so I did that. And I thought, well, actually, I quite like this. And what game can I write that has um, three dimensional balls in? <laughs> so th this sort actually of reminds three, me of three D pool just kind of happened. Just kind that's of, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of like the the the, the elite story of of perhaps apocryphal of like oh they we just wanted to generate <laughs> random planet names and then we made a whole three D shooting came around to you you're like well i was just doing this cool afterburner then and then a, a pool this game, game is the obvious thing to make out of it if you think about it um it is it was and it did and it was fun yeah and the bbc was just even though the bbc couldn't do afterburner i don't think um it was oh, good. that sounds like a challenge to some of our uh, our community actually afterburner anyone is that so forward it'll literally three years of your life gone <laughs> um but it could just about do a kind of a three a pool table and walls and it played all right it's nice yeah and it's great it was originally not 3d pool it was something else it was maltese joe's yeah so for, was, for people was, who don't know who the heck maltese joe is what <laughs> basically he was a very good pool player yeah maltese joe bavara and um he got caught up with some kind of um money thing for, for, forged money thing and um because um took wind out of his sales because you know, he's, he's a very very good 
He's, he's a nice bloke. Met him, met him, he's great. Oh, you actually met him? Cool. Yeah, of course, yeah. You say, um, of course, but I mean, like, it, it sounds like the kind of thing that you could imagine someone just handing down the, the name and, you know, you get the rights for it, but not actually meeting the people. Like, That's no, he was good. He was good. It came to press launch and um, it was good as gold. I liked him. Yeah. But yeah, so you, you alluded to this uh, a moment ago. The, the loss of the official association was no bad thing, given the fact that he was bought, jailed for forging. Uh, unfortunate. <laughs> yes. So it got oh. renamed, but clearly, obviously, I mean, we just saw on the title screen there and, and over here in the bottom right hand corner here, there were still references in the code. So it must have been quite late on in the development process that you the name was pulled. Um, yes, it was. Yeah. So it was, it, it was just a nice little game. I, I liked it. Um, and then the same sort of thing got taken on to um, snooker on um, things like uh, Archer McLean snooker, which was uh, on the ST and the Eagle Wings. And obviously, the platform is a bit more um, capable than the BBC, mm-hmm. and um, pe- people took it as a challenge to make it a bit more realistic. But I was never really interested in realistic games. I always thought that was a bit of a kind of a you know, nothing, nothing, nothing. This is very much more like a puzzle game as well, if I remember right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and it had a whole load of uh, trick shots you had, they had to solve. And uh, I didn't make you know. The end ones are quite difficult, but most of, most of the time you could. All you had to do was like just clear all the all the balls on the table, and there was just like a, and you could you could kind of um, figure out how roughly how and then you get closer and try stuff. Yeah, and that worked out all right. That was nice. That's cool. And and yeah. the launch party is yeah. this? We believe is this you? It is me. Yes. Definitely so me. you you look very similar to how you look now. Um, you've hardly <laughs> aged a bit. In, in, in a wig. But yeah, <laughs> and are there any other people in that photograph? I mean, it's very blurry. But are there any people in that photograph that we would know or recognise? I, I can't see. It. I, I have I have the original of the photograph here somewhere, but I wasn't able to find it in time. Sorry. Oh and well, perhaps when you have the higher res version, then maybe then that, then that, there's that maybe some... that maybe Paul will burn there. I can't really see. Him. Not sure. I mean, when yeah yeah we'll we'll uh, move move on here. So we we've got um, this disc which. I think, um, I think fell into the hands of, or, or may even just be the disc that went out. Um, certainly, Arcadian had this this particular disc, which contains yes. the game, but also contains your little message to the publisher. By the look of it, exactly. And basically, because they're a bunch of idiots, they just put the whole <laughs> thing out. I'll, I'll be honest. That's, that's, that's what an idiot would do. They would just not read it. Just, just... So I'll have to do. And then just duplicate the disc you sent them. And, and they went, well, we, we booted it up and it ran the game. So great. <laughs> ship it. Ship it, yeah. <laughs> I've definitely been in those meetings. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just ship it. I don't care anymore. I'm finished with this. But it was, I thought this was very sweet reading this through because I, I remember as a 17 year old, uh, with along with Rich DW, writing a similar thing to send to Acorn user and to Superior Software where we were trying to get stuff that we were done written. And it's just nice to see that the same thing happened with people who actually got their software published and, you know, very, very big names in the industry. So that's great. And the sad thing, of course, with this is that, um, you know, you go to great lengths to describe how mangled up the program's going to be. And uh, unfortunately, an S or U dot pool BBC is the unmangled version that got shipped. Oh, well. Good for us, though. Good for history. Good, good for history. preservation. Uh, oh, a quick question, which I've, I've been failing to look at uh, regularly. The the loading screens. We go back to those. I noticed this too here. Um, why was the, the 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 one on the right hand side? The pre release disc looks higher resolution and better than the the one on the on the right. There is that purely because it was done in the same for for the electron, or was there some other story there? Do you recall? I have no idea. Because it, it that the left hand one is a nice nice image, but. And the right-hand one's great as well. It's just obviously lower resolution. So, all right, so no it's, ideas it's, there. It's, it's mode one versus mode five, definitely. But so, right. More than that, I don't know. I'd, I'd guess it was the Electron, but I don't know. And uh, we've got some more shots from it there. And now my dog started to bark, so we'll try and draw attention away from that. Uh, and so, yeah, those are the trick shots, I think, there were as... Uh, oh, no, I'm not. And um, it had some great reviews, right? But it was really yeah. towards the end, um, as was I recall, it, of the, was, the yeah. Beeb. Yeah. Which kind of segues nicely into the next topic, which is the the other Acorn machine that maybe didn't have all the promise in the world. Tell us about 
Tell us about the uh, the Archimedes. I love the Archie. I loved it to bits. But um, the people who bought the Archie weren't games players. And um, the, 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 I kept on... Each year I come back to it and try to look at it again, but there just weren't the numbers. That if you looked at how many copies of things were being sold, it was just pitiful. That um, people were writing the games more out of love for the machine than um, actual marketing exercise. You know, and um, all credit to them for doing it. And but you know, I wasn't that kind of person. So there you go. Understood. Yeah, makes perfect sense. And. I mean, you, you, you love the machine, presumably because um, it sort of was very much the spiritual successor to the, the BBCB. It was like beautifully put together oh, compared it, to the it, it, shambolic. Uh, shambolic is too strong, but like the electron was obviously more cut down than it needed to be. Well, I think if you look, look at it as a, as a graph, the Acorn Atom to the BBC, they basically took all the things that were wrong with it and kind of maxed, max, maximized them mm -hmm. and just fixed them. And when they went to the, um, the Archimedes, they just made everything just tons better. Mm -hmm. It's just stunning. But in some ways, they did too good a job, far too good a job. And um, the, it was, I don't know, it was just miles. It was, it, was, it was miles beyond what the market could support as right. a games machine. As a, right, especially up against this, the very good incumbent 16-bit machines that had specialist hardware to make games more uh, appropriate. Well, that's, that's, the, that's true about the Amiga. The SD didn't. SD was... That's true. Good point. Good point. And this is not a talk about that. I should really get, yeah. get distracted here. But So talking of uh, the Archimedes and 3D Paul here, um, this never actually came out, to my understanding. No, is that's that right. right. Yeah, that's right. I, 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 did this... some I did some demos of it, and um, you could play the game. Um, but... Um, it just, I, I just couldn't get in, get um, excited enough to finish it. Got it. Um, so we want to talk about Wave Machine. Yes, yes, yes. This, this, this is a funny thing I did. Um, but back in those days, um, I did lots of demos of all kinds of things. One of them was a demo for pitch shifting, <laughs> and I came up with my own algorithm for shifting, you know, audio from from. You know, change the length of the pitch of sounds. So um, this is a pitch yeah. pitch shifting uh, by not just speeding it up, but by some other yeah. mechanism. The thing is that if you just speed it up, you get up, you get chipmunked, mm -hmm. and everything goes. So when you have here, here like Alvin chipmunks, whatever, in the old days they would have they would be, they'd be saying the same things, but very slowly, and then speed up, and then very slowly, and, and it would basically kind of speed it up. So. Um, with a, with a pitch shifting, you want to change the pitch, but not change the length. Got it. Okay, so I, I came up with a way of doing that and uh, had some very cool demos for it, actually. Um, and I tried to pitch it to Yamaha and made a video and some tech do documents for them to move to Japan. And took them out about, I don't know, nine, ten months later to come back and say, we're not interested. And this was, you'd, you'd done this on the Archie at this point, was that? I did the Archie, the, yes. So got that, it. That was, that was the, the thing I was um, working hardest on for that. And I, I, I had really great, you know, really high hopes for it. You know, because it was great. And but, but they'd, um, Yamaha had already sunk several million dollars into a kind of um, a Fourier based kind of algorithm. Right. That's... They, were, they, were, they were building chips for and everything. And of course, um, it all failed miserably, and so they threw it all away. And had they taken my mind thing, they would have been, you know, building stuff in a week. But Fascinating. Anyway, that's, that's just gosh. Oh, and yours was purely software based, and you could could you do it real time? Was it post processing? Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, real time. Real time. Yeah. That's impressive. No, that's, wow, uh, it's impressive even now. It was great. Um, it's just it's just a good um, low complexity algorithm that just worked. You know, it, was, it wasn't trying to be too clever. It wasn't trying to be heavily filtered or very heavy this or very heavy that. It was just kind of like sympathetic to the sound. Yeah, but it never went anywhere, one of those things. Now, for, for time reasons, unfortunately, we've, we've shuffled a whole bunch of your unreleased uh, titles that we wanted to talk about, including, I believe, Joust. Uh, the, those slides are gone. They're going to go into another part of this presentation, this, okay. this interview. Um, but um, we can talk a little bit about 
some of the other weird things that we've seen on the way. So there was frack for risk Os, yes. but obviously, how much did you have to do with this? I saw this last week. The first time. <laughs> So quite a lot then. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I was intimately involved with, um, I mean, never, with never seeing it. Yeah. The first thing I thought of when I saw this was that those rather unfortunate um, pirated graphics changed versions of Frack could really not hold a count. count. Look at the, the bird image over here in the middle of the Frack there. That that's I don't know what that's trying to say, but I'm definitely seeing something that shouldn't be there. there. <laughs> But he's choking. Is, I mean, he, is he choking it? I think. Yeah. I think he's choking it. I, I think we'll move think, on to the next. Do you think he's choking? It? We'll I think he's choking. The... Do you think he's choking? <laughs> so there was a three D version of Frack, or there was a thought about yes, this. What would? What right. was? Um, what was going through your head here? Rather than yeah. Basically, I had um, I had a big plan for Frack two, and that was a kind of a isometric view, a bit like kind of a bit like Marvel Madness, but not quite. Um, that sort of view, um, with Trog Jr. on a skateboard with a boomerang. It was, oh, and um, I, I did some tests with it and some demos, and then I designed the game and wrote some music. And um, it, it, it came pretty clear, though, that what I was trying was maybe 10 or 20 years too early. In fact, I'm, you know, I, don't, I don't think that there's, even now there's much of a market for an isometric musical. Um, <laughs> <laughs> boomerang you'd be surprised i'm sure so, someone would like it i'm sure someone would like it but it was it was um, just a kind of bit mad um and then on the, on the the um archimedes i did a frack three which is frack 3d which was um where trog, trog was in the middle of the screen and um as you turn the world went around it looks a bit kind of um simple compared to the stuff you get on consoles now but it would do because it was just archimedes yeah, so, all yeah. software. But it was it was doing some stuff. It was nice. Um, uh, Frack and the Amiga too. I had, I had I had some ideas for that, but again, it, just, it was it wasn't really kind of good. It just it wasn't really biting. Anyway, one of those things. So the one unreleased title that has uh, we have we have got time to talk about is yes. is Malice. Yes. Do you want to talk us through uh, what Malice is? Yeah, Malice was uh, my version of Sinistar. No, Boff loved Sinistar. It's fantastic. Um, and he just loved it a bit. And, um, you know, I, I basically got the, the game mechanics in place. And it was nice. Um, but the vertical scroll was really difficult. Now, mm -hmm. Because the way I'd done vertical scrolling in Firetrack was really stable for continuous scrolling. If you're continuously scrolling, it works it's fine. But if you try and like slow it down or do anything to it, it just, it just, it just wouldn't, it would, it would jump. Got it. And I just couldn't get rid of the jump. And you know, I, 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 the game was, was fine. It was playing fine. It was doing its thing. And it was, it was doing what it's supposed to do, but it was just jumping. So I had to say, no, can't do it. So what, what kind of timeline was this? I know we've sort of gone a bit out of order here. We've mostly been chronological, but, but whenabouts was this? Um, I think I had some demos while I was doing Fire Track. And then they asked for it. It was kind of quite late. Yeah. Quite late in the game, but yeah. never could quite get that that uh, thing. The, the the scrolling's stable. So yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. Unfortunate. If, if I'd found, found a different sixty eight forty five trick, um, then I would have been able to do it. But the one I used, one I came up with, was um, just a bit too, a bit too specific to smooth vertical scrolling. Right. Not, but not, it... not, it was the first of its kind, though, right? I, as far as I'm aware, that was a, you know, fire track scrolling was the first vertical smoothing, smooth scrolling yeah, I'd seen. Was, so, yeah. I mean, don't don't beat yourself up too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, um, it's like Peter Thiel. He says um, going from naught to one. Anyone right. Can from, anyone can go from one to two, but going from naught to one. That's, Just that's, 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 that's different. Showing thing. that something is possible, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you obviously, we, we talked a little bit um, in the in the bit beforehand that you're you, you're no longer making games in your in your day job but yeah. you you kind of still have half a foot in the games uh world because because of this well yes this was a lot of fun um i just wanted to do it and um i found out that i looked at lots of different engines and stuff and i found that i could do it in game maker studio and it's it's a bit of a funny old thing i mean today i've 
I spent today just bashing my head against bloody Game Maker Studio. Um, you know, when it, when it's one of those things, when it goes right, you go, oh, this is brilliant. I love this. Right. And, <laughs> and you try and um, build it on Android that you were trying to do, that was fine two months ago, and try again, and it just doesn't work. You go, no, what? Why? What are you doing? Oh, oh no. You want to slap, and you want to slap someone. What, what you've just oh, described, though, is is my 30 years of being a, a, a programmer. Um, yes. There's always <laughs> frustrating, you're solving problems, everything's lovely, and then, why the... <laughs> someone's, up, someone's upgraded it. You know, the, the, the thing that's super annoying about um, yo-yo games, now part of Opera, is that um, you think... Not yo-yo games like Frack. <laughs> well, maybe coincidence, I don't know. Um, think about it's called yo-yo games who make um, Game Maker Studio. Is that you think after all these years of putting software out, they might have a single bloody regression test in place? <laughs> you, uh, yeah. you, you, but you'd be wrong. I, 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 just, I, I don't know. I don't know how they they do it. I don't know how. So, <laughs> um, so today I've been doing stuff with um, my Mac Mini, trying to get that working, and um, it's got obviously I want to track on all the different platforms. Um, but yes, but it's been so much fun. And the start, the, the uh, testers went through startup. They were lovely. They were absolutely lovely. And all credit to them. In fact, I'm, I'm really pleased. And I've got some um, stuff to give out. That, that, you know, I have to make make up and give out for them. Oh. Because they were, not, not today, but I have to, I have to do it. That's fantastic, sure. though. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm sure they'd be delighted. Well, they, they, I mean, they, we... they, were, they were really great. Because um, basically, I started, they, they started testing the game maybe a few days early. So it was a bit clunky. But it all came together. It was, and they were really nice about it. And no, and and I think they they liked it too. You know, and um, it's all, it's, it's fun. And I think probably the most critical thing to say is well, two things. One, it is available now on Steam and on many platforms, by the sounds yeah. of it. And two, if like me, you played a pirated version of Frack back in the day, <laughs> this is your chance to redeem to yourself. Partially redeem yourself. <laughs> Partially, I'm trying to buy it for my kids' computers, but I apparently have to be friends with them on Steam, and I don't know how to do that. So I need to do, but to try and like uh, undo the the damage of, of of 30 years ago. So this is everyone's a opportunity to come clean and, and go and find it on Steam. Is this is it easy to find on Steam? Can you just type "frack" and it's there, or is yes. there a special link we can go? That's to? all there is. What's on Steam? Perfect. It's really great. I, I don't honestly believe that pirates can redeem themselves. After all, you know, they. The game they gave out was played by thousands of people. So I, I think that um, Redemption is probably a little bit further away, but if they want to do it, that's great. Right, right, yeah. Now, my, my, one of my two sons has now just gone slightly off camera, is grinning himself for, for the idea of getting a new game. So I, I think we're going to have to go with that. Good. So, uh, oh, yeah. And I think it looks like um, we need to review. So buy the game and then put your honest opinion, provided it's five stars. Um, <laughs> And if you've, if, I mean, I Six think that's how this works. Six stars. I don't know how if, how many stars there are, but at least maybe at least just run, run it up to ten. I don't know. Whatever the number is. The, the high exactly. <laughs> um, so that so that we can get frack actually uh, with a with a with some reviews there, which presumably goes into the algorithm, which means it'll be recommended to people and and help Nick out um, in in getting it out to a wider population. Because like, let's face it, who doesn't love a caveman with a yo-yo? And there's a whole new generation of people that are going to be excited to play play along the thing is it's um it's a nice little game and actually playing it on a pc is surprisingly similar nothing much has really changed it was great it's it was, it's kind of what i've managed to do is make the game i was thinking about in 1984 so yeah what was what, what's the, What's the what a lovely way to sort of be able to 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 go back and relive those times, but yeah. and actually improve on them and, and enjoy enjoy the process again. Yeah, the thing is, as I said in the previous talk in, back in July, um, I'm not really a retro kind of guy. Um, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about what I was doing back in 1984 and how it all worked because there were good bits and bad bits, and you know what we were were just kids. You know, we're just a bunch of kids trying stuff. And um, the the good thing about Frack was, as I said, it was I, I, I didn't really have to compromise. And um, this, apart from just finding ways to squeeze it in, mm -hmm. 
to the 10K videos. And then presumably, again, because you're self-publishing this version, you, you have the sim- and you've got a day job. Uh, you, you could spend as much time as you felt was right to get it to, how, to be the game that you wanted it to be. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't kind of um, go easy on it. I did, I, did, I did what I wanted to do. Yeah, it's great. You know, I, I, knew exactly, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and just tried to stick with that. So I'm being asked, is there a plan to release a Mac version? Um, I have a Mac Mini, and I've been trying to. Um, I've just switched to the Apple developer and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. So yeah, you know, hundred pounds or whatever it is to get become one of those. Ninety nine dollars. Ah. So I'm, I'm so used to converting dollars to pounds in my head and just saying, <laughs> oh, I'm thinking dollars. It must be pounds. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so I think that's about um, the end of the talk. Um, the, the 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 time that we have, we've come pretty much to the time and some, and we've also cut some slides. So thank you again, first of all to Nick, who you can follow on Twitter at Nick Pelling. And I think as we said at the beginning, at your peril. peril. Uh, Nick mostly pays, posts uh, great um, puns. I was about to say bad puns, only because that's just the natural thing that you say before the word pun, right? <laughs> there is only bad puns. But no, they're great puns and jokes. And um, uh, yeah, thank you to Nick for his time. Thank you so much to Dave uh, for putting the slide deck together. Yeah, and thanks, uh, Nick, great. is there anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, you've been great. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I think we've got some, we'll, we'll be meeting again because this is <gasps> dun, dun, da, to be continued. Yes. So I'll be my, back. Frank I'm going to open up. No, I'm gonna, I was about to say, I'm going to open up so that anyone can ask the questions now. And I, realize I have literally no idea how to do that. Well, perhaps, Nick, you're going to be able to recoup your long lost programs that were either shuttled away due to somebody's bad business or piracy maybe you'll get it maybe you'll have a chance to recoup some of those losses that would be really nice but um i'm not holding my breath i did i did frack <laughs> my pc for, but just for fun and, yeah, uh, for accounting it. for inflation might be a bit tricky given that you're selling yes. it i think is it less less now than oh yes yeah, nothing's like six quid basically i didn't want, just didn't want to give it away but that was, that was about as low as i could pitch it that had been looking silly it's like dry cleaning you can't if you're a dry cleaner you can't um so dry clean for a pound. So they think, oh, they think, oh, how can they do it? They're so cheaply. Well, yeah, well, they say anything free is worth what you paid for it, and that's how you perceive the value. So you have to make it happy something so that people realize. But, but yeah. yeah. It's just a silly number. Well, a great game shouldn't die. That's the main thing here, I think. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more, Ed. Um, oh, I have got a question that uh, Stuart asked, but that I forgot to ask you in the middle. So, Stuart, if you want to unmute, you can ask it, or I, I'm going to give you a second or two. In Arcadians, when the ship dies, when you get hit, uh, that explosion, well, it's not an explosion, it's the, the noise on the sprite. I, I've always loved that. And it's better than the Arcadian, uh, sorry, the, the Galaxian explosion, in my opinion. Um, have you any memories of that, or how you did the technique for the noise on the sprite? I haven't the faintest idea. Fair enough. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'd have to look through the code. And, uh, no, I, I have the faintest idea. I do love no, it. It's no, great. You no, know, I, I did try. To, back in those days, I did try to be very direct about stuff. So it, it probably wasn't clever. I'd be surprised if it was clever. For well, sure. So the arcade version has like several frames of of sprite. So and the BBC one obviously didn't. But it, it's more effective, I feel. Thank then thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, a quick, quick housekeeping thing. I'm sorry, I did actually invite you, uh, Stuart, to ask the question as well. But if you, if anyone else is going to jump in and ask a question, we'd prefer if you could turn your video on, if you don't mind, so that we can have you for the recording. So, any other questions? Ask away. I'll try not to do any puns. <laughs> By You've been way, very good. Very restrained, yeah. Testing uh, your new frack was a lot of fun, by the way. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, excellent, thanks, Ed. I'm, I'm really pleased you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was just so much fun to uh, see that in in a, a really cool format. Again, very inventive. The, the nice thing is is that on the original frack, because it's on in mode one and I didn't have much memory, um, Trog had to move every four pixels. So the whole game was four. 
uh, steps before. Whereas on the PC, um, it's uh, everything's now a pixel. So it's, it's literally four times faster. And, but it, it kind of feels the same. It doesn't feel like, oh no, that's different. This actually just works. It's just, yeah, it's great. Absolutely, it does. Thank you very much. Unless anyone else has any other questions, I think we can, we can uh, thank Nick for his time again and for all of the things he shared with us today. Thanks, Nick. Hey, hey. thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Remarkably few puns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they've been welling up inside of you, Nick. And you're going to go off and do a torrent of tweets right now just to get it out of your system, right? I've been voting them all. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we should all lean in. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably need Fantastic. to set up your Patreon uh, funding. I think um, Patreon for my puns. I would have to give money away. I think. <laughs> <laughs> It would probably be worth a punt. <laughs> so, so, Nick, you, you seem to, you've made, by the sound of it, more, more pieces of music than you have games. Oh, yeah, at some point. Did you choose the wrong career? Should, should you have gone into that industry, maybe? Just to, um, I, mean, I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, I think that the games industry was... Um, a very exciting time to be doing things, and I really liked it. But um, music has always been a big, you know, big, a big love of mine. Um, but you know, you, you can't necessarily make money out of things. It's not, I don't know. I, I know I've never made a penny out of out of music. Um, maybe. It, yeah, I suppose no one knows. I guess yeah. it's one of those things. Yeah. Um, so. Uh... Kieran asks, are you planning a Steam version of Firetrack after Frack? Well, yes. And no. And yes. What, <laughs> I, have it... what I actually have in mind is called Zalatracking. Which is a kind of um, sort of shooty mashup of um, vertical and horizontal scroll scrollers. And um, so a bit of Zalaga, a bit of Firetrack. I, I, I kind of like Iridium, but I'll do my own version of it. So, um, a, a super shooty, multi directional um, thing. Because in the arcades, there, there were a few games that kind of messed around with the format a bit. But um, I'd like to really mess around with the format. And, but sort of, I don't know, I, 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 I have in my mind what I'm trying to do, but um, you wouldn't really believe me if I told you. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds very, very intriguing. Certainly, yeah. and I'm but sure it, you'll find an army of playtesters ready. So. But in, in my head, it's it's kind of um, it's like a shooting shooting shooty game, a standard shooter, except it isn't. Except it's a bit with bits really, but it is, but it isn't. Um, and I, I, I can't. I, I've got I've got like sketches of it and stuff. And I, I know what I'm trying. I, I know where it's going. But so that's my that's my plan. So yeah, why not? Fantastic. Um, someone has asked, Dave, S Dave F has asked, wasn't there a grayscale version of Firetrack? I've surely That's, not dreamt this, no, but I can't get an emulator or my real beeb to do it. Okay, now, what I discovered when I was doing Firetrack was that if you write a thing to a certain register at a certain pixel position, um, it interfered with the color generation on, on TVs. And... Um, the TVs would basically go, no, that's not colour, it's black and white. Right, you, the colour burst signal or something, that's right, would, yeah, yeah. would you disrupt it and the TV would go like, oh, uh, black no, and white signal. No, it's black and white, yeah. So um, I put it on F5, if you press F5 in four years, um, it'll just, it, it'll fire track. Um, it'll disrupt colour burst. And so, but you have to be watching on a, on a TV. You can't be watching on, on a monitor. Because Which is why the emulators color. don't do it either. Yes, that's right, yeah. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. All right. Note to emulator writers uh, emulate the color burst <laughs> and, and, and interfering with it. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, you know, it's one of those things. You know, in order to write the um, pixel stuff, it had to be like real cycle perfect stuff. So you had the, all the business of interrupts coming in before other interrupts and then waiting for that interrupt so you could be on a certain position. 
yeah, so that was the kind of that was the deal. And I, yeah, you... I, I just I'll just poach a load of stuff, and then that happened. I went, okay, that's good. Wasn't wasn't, so wasn't cool. expecting it, but it worked. So why not? I mean, when, when we talk about the tech stuff sometime, I, I really want to dig in because I use Zaliger as my sort of poster child for why you need to emulate the undefined opcodes and what yes. they do and how they work, which is because yes. so it, it, it works. It, Zaliger works brilliantly until it hits that SAX instruction and then it starts yes. to go a bit wrong and it gets worse and worse. And then the whole thing <laughs> crashes in a beautiful color soup. So so yes. thank you for writing that. It's been a perfect demo for me to show <laughs> people how you write emulators. But I think we are at time now for questions so um once again nick thank you so much and um we'll speak to you another time look forward to it thank you everyone everyone's been great it's been a really great evening thank you cheers